There we go. Look at me. I mean, you can't because I'm not on screen yet. There I am. This is a potato. We're not using this today. I just had some time to kill during the countdown because I'm like ready on time for once in my life. And I thought I would practice my hand-eye coordination. I've only dropped it once so far, which is a little too many considering it's just a potato and I literally threw it to myself, but <laughs> I don't spend a lot of time um, trying to do things physically. Most of the time it's like through a keyboard, so I'm not using this today. <laughs> this is a sweet potato. I'm putting that away. I will leave the regular potatoes. Today is not learning how to juggle. Today is a baking stream where I'm going to be trying my very best, which is perhaps less than some might expect it to be, at making a lemon meringue pie from scratch. Now, as a prefacing, just in case this is your first baking stream, first of all, welcome to my kitchen. And second of all, I am a, I would want to say an average baker, but that might be rude to bakers. <laughs> I'm not bad, but I'm not great. I'm like a home baker, you know, I'm a, I'm a proudly mediocre baker. And I think that in this age of the internet where everything is on a blog with like beautiful photos taken, I want to hold down the fort for people making kind of ugly baked goods that don't turn out quite right, but like they still taste good, right? Like <laughs> I am reserving a right to kind of suck at this. So I have lemons, I have bowls, I got us some ingredients ahead of time. We got some like flour, uh, sugar, cornstarch, all kinds of things. We're gonna be making the crust from scratch. We're gonna be making the filling from scratch. We're gonna be making the meringue from scratch. We're gonna bake it. You do not get to see me eat this until tomorrow because it's gotta like bake and then it's gotta like cool and then it's gotta like cool again. I can't cut this thing until like nine tonight. So, um, but you'll be able to see it like come together <laughs> and there's plenty of stuff that can go wrong between now and then. So first of all, how are you guys doing? Uh, with no new pet charms in Shadowlands, I need to know how many you have stored up. Um, I don't know. I'm away from my computer, so I don't know off the top of my head. More than a thousand and less than three thousand. Probably less than two thousand, I think. Um, and I thought that was kind of interesting what they said about how they're not doing a new currency. That, to me, does not explicitly mean that they're not rotating the current currencies, though. They would not need to add a new currency to just make all of the new stuff work for polished pet charms but then convert our current polished pet charms into shiny. Um, in my brain, that is still possible. Maybe it's not, and I just misunderstood. I was kind of like reading the blue post on my phone while setting this up. But um, yeah, definitely more than a thousand. I guess if they are, if they're really not going to convert it, then I should probably like be grinding some. I, you know what, I'll make, I'll make pet charms and Shadowlands, it's fine. So I need to get started right away on the crust because that is going to need to chill in the fridge a little bit. We have three different parts that all kind of need to come together at the same time, but I definitely need the crust to chill first. So my recipe, I've kind of like stolen bits and pieces um, from blogs, which is fine because I'm not sharing it, <laughs> but I just basically made myself like a Google doc with um, recipes for the filling, the meringue, the pie crust from places that looked relatively uh, trustworthy slash used ingredients and techniques that I've used before. So for the pie crust, I'm going to be making a crust that uses part shortening, part butter, because I've always found those to work best for me. So I have a half a cup of ice water chilling in the freezer. I also put my butter in the freezer. And the way I like to do this is I like to mix together my dry ingredients and then grate the butter with a coarse cheese grater into like a big bowl, kind of mix everything together and then um, rub in the shortening, toss on the water until it forms a delightful shaggy mass. So I'm gonna get started on that. Um, I'm gonna see if I can, if this wireless mouse would just like work. Oh, oh, almost. Hey, wow, I didn't expect that to. All I wanted to do was uh, switch the scene to give you guys a little bit of a counter camera, just so I can show you my bowl of flour because that's going to be so exciting. Okay, um, I don't know why I turned this off. I'm gonna need it immediately. <laughs> we're, we're gonna be weighing our dry ingredients at least. So I'm going to need, let's see here. We're gonna get our flour and our salt together first. And then we're gonna be grating the frozen butter into the, um, into the bowl. So here is our nice little kitchen scale. Uh, I'm gonna do this probably in the biggest bowl I have. I don't really see why not. It's not like it's gonna be like, no, that bowl was too big and now your dough is ruined. So let's just change this to grams because that's what normal people use. And then we're going to reset it. 
So we're gonna spoon this in until we get 315 grams of flour. This is all purpose, normal flour. Nothing fancy about the flour. At the very bottom of the container, there's a little bit of um, all purpose that has like whole wheat mixed into it, but we're not gonna worry about that because we're not gonna be digging that deep. Uh, Trish, thank you very much for the five month reset. If I miss subs, guys, just yell at me. I can kind of hear them a little bit. I turned it up as loud as I could. Um, I can't hear them a lot though. If I have like a mixer or something on later, it's gonna be trouble. Okay, 315 grams. And the nice thing about weighing it is it does not matter how compacted you have gotten your flour. It doesn't matter how dense you scoop it because uh, the scale does not lie. I mean, unless it does, because it's like a pretty cheap scale, but like it's probably better than just scooping. There we go. 315 grams of flour. And we want one teaspoon of salt. That's fairly straightforward. We may, am I gonna need more flour later? I might be done with my flour. I'm gonna just leave it on the counter until I figure that one out. Okay, so salt. And then we'll mix that together and we're gonna start grating in the butter first. And then we'll kind of pinch in the shortening. Once we get to that stage, I'm gonna use kind of cold hands, which is going to mean chilling my hands. Teaspoon. With, um, I mean, I guess water from the sink, right? <laughs> It is already a nice, fresh 80 degrees in my kitchen Fahrenheit in Celsius. I want to say that's kind of like, what, 25, 26? It's pretty warm, and I'm going to be running the oven, so it's only, and the stove, it's only really going to get warmer in here. We have all of the available ACs running, but just the way the apartment's set up, none of them are particularly, none of them are particularly close. Why am I putting that away? I'm going to need some of this stuff later. We're making like three things here. Particularly close proximity to the kitchen. Okay, so we're gonna put that aside and then I'm gonna grate my butter. We're using six tablespoons of butter and I set it to chill in the freezer. So we wanna be really careful here because butter's already slippery and frozen things are slippery and cheese graters are dangerous. So I'm gonna just kinda use the paper to hold onto it and I'm gonna believe in myself and I'm gonna focus. <laughs> Centurio, thank you very much for the eight month reset. All right, there you go. We'll do this right over here. This is my favorite cheese grater. It's just an OXO Good Grips one. My mom got one like just like that for me for a gift once. And then uh, somebody broke it, but then I later got another one. Uh, and it's just like a nice good coarse grate because I just don't have it in me to finally grate cheese. I've never grated cheese to such an application where it was gonna be really important that the grate be fine and not coarse. And um, you know, grating things coarsely is faster. <laughs> Usually if I'm cooking, I'm not, lazy, but you know, you want to work smarter and not harder. So we're going to just kind of grate this in and periodically kind of dust it around because you don't want to make like a big lump that kind of defeats the purpose of grating it. You could also use, I say this as though I'm teaching anybody, I'm not. You could also use a um, food processor. I used to do that before I broke mine. You can just kind of work it in with your hands, but you want to keep everything very cold. And I find that the grater is the best way to get into kind of uniform usable pieces without handling it too much and getting it too warm. Um, I always found that the, the food processor method, I just never quite got it to work for me. I don't know what was wrong. Probably nothing. I think I probably just over or underdid it. It wasn't getting into very uniform pieces. And the grater just kind of does the trick because you don't need to get it fully, fully down. All right, so we're gonna be kind of careful with the last little bit. That's probably close enough. I'm just gonna like squoosh that last bit in with my fingers. And that's the butter done with no major injury so far. So uh, hooray for that. I think I'm done with this. We're gonna throw that in the sink. Um, I'm gonna pinch in my shortening now, which means I need to weigh that as well, I think. Um, I'm looking for about three quarters of a cup of shortening. So I am just going to grab it from the fridge. And then uh, uh, they say that 148 grams, this is vegetable shortening. So I'm just gonna weigh it out in like a little bowl. Why not? I took all the bowls out, I may as well use them. And then reset that. We're going for 148 grams of this stuff. Um, shortening is not necessary for pie dough. I just have a much easier time making pie when, or making pie crust in general when I use some of this. I feel like it makes the dough come together without so much drama. Usually I'm like stuck in this awful life or death battle of not wanting to overwork it and not wanting to overheat it 
helped, but needing it to come together and also not wanting to use too much water. All the recipes were like, don't use too much liquid and don't work it too much and don't let it get warm, but it's got to come together and you're just staring at a pile of flour being like, well. So um, I found that, for me at least, using a recipe that is half shortening half butter, or at least part shortening part butter, really kind of does that trick. So that's 142, which is a little, oh, almost, almost it. We need 148 grams here. 146. <laughs> you know, if you have the skill, you may as well be... Um, specific 147 and 148 perfect okay so we're gonna put this back in uh escalon thank you very much for the brand new sub soul horror with the brand new sub zinthulu with the 12 month reset happy one year and francesca fury with the nine month reset thanks guys okay we'll have a little bit more wiggle room um with the timing once i have the dough cooling i can then talk you through the big plan for the meringue because there's a couple of very large pitfalls <laughs> pit pitfalls not pit bulls uh there's going to be no musicians or dogs involved in the making of this but a couple of large pitfalls that could go wrong with that so we're going to throw in this and i'm going to just kind of very um chill my hands a little bit you could also like grab ice or maybe your hands are already cold you know if you're doing this in the winter you might not need to do anything also, this is not doing anything because it's so warm outside that the, the cold tap water is already just kind of lukewarm. So I'm just going to uh, use my hands to really quickly bring this together. You could use a pastry blender. Um, I don't have one, and for whatever reason, I've just decided I don't want one. I don't really know. Um, it's like another thing. <laughs> and as long as I can make acceptable pastry or pie dough with my gosh darn hands, um, I don't really want one. I've always found that they're... They don't, they ask muscles of me that I just don't have, you know? Okay. Taking note, because I have to make lemon darts tomorrow. So what's about to happen is I'm going to do something. Uh, I don't know if I can tell you how to do it properly, but I'm, I'm quite likely to, to find out like a real big mistake. And then you can be like, okay, we're not going to be like Hazel. <laughs> we're not going to be like Hazel. Um, the thing I'm most worried about is the filling is kind of a curd which is like an egg thickened pudding almost. It's sort of like a thinner version of that. And in order to make curd, you need to use eggs and you need to get them mixed in without curdling them. But you also need to, um, you need to boil them for a while. So you basically have to temper the eggs by very slowly adding small amounts of hot liquid into the eggs and then add the eggs back into the rest of it. And you just, you, if you do it wrong, you get scrambled eggs and then you've just like ruined a bunch of stuff. And if you don't do it right, I just said if you do it wrong and if you don't do it right, if you do it wrong differently, then the thing will never thicken and you just have like sauce. Um, I've done both of those things before. So what I'm gonna do now is just kind of use the spoon to kind of bring together. We're gonna add a little bit of ice water at a time. And then we're just gonna kind of smoosh it until it comes together to form like a nice big shaggy mass. We're probably gonna use almost all of this water recipe called for half a cup, which is how I knew I was going to like this recipe because always, always with the like one tablespoon of water and not once in my life has that ever even come close to working for me. So this at least calls for a reasonable amount of water to like actually make a dough, you know? All right. It can still be kind of dusty. It just needs to like be dough. <laughs> it needs to not be, um, all right. So this is getting there actually. Uh, you can kind of use your hands to squoosh you know and that can kind of make it hold together but we're just really we don't want to heat it too much we don't want to melt our, our fats all right i'm gonna just like a little more and then and then keep going with this and then we'll start squooshing and um, what we're going to do is we're, once we have this forming a cohesive dough we're going to divide it into two pieces wrap them each in plastic wrap and put them you could put them in the fridge for a couple hours or overnight i'm going to put them in the freezer well i'm going to put one in the freezer one in the fridge probably because the freezer one is the one we're using today yeah, so now we can kind of get in here and squoosh it a little bit. Uh, technical term. And that's basically dough. That's close enough. Yeah, that's dough. All right, so now I'm going to eyeball this in half. And, uh, you know, kind of like when amoeba separate. Or not amoeba. Um, you know, cells, when cells are dividing, there's like a fun word for it. But anyways, kind of like that. Here we go. Uh, this particular dough does not have any sugar in it. And I'm going to regret that later. But it does mean that the other half of it, I'm only going to use one crust for this because this is a single crust pie. There's no top on it. We're using a meringue top. Um, I could probably use the other one to make like a quiche or something. And if I'm making a savory thing instead, 
then I will uh, probably appreciate not having a sugared crust. So we can put sugar on top, and of course the filling and the meringue's both gonna be sweet, so it's probably fine. So now, this thing, and I am so proud of myself. This thing was just kind of like a roll of plastic in a box for the longest time. And I finally sorted it out and like untangled it so that the little slide slicer actually works. <laughs> and you can like use it and stuff, it's great. Um, I know that's not that groundbreaking, but we had been just like peeling this thing off with our fingernails for the longest time. So, there's a nice little dough ball number one. Uh, it's too bright up there because of the light, but what do you do? That bad boy's going in the freezer for at least 30 minutes. Um, and then the other one can just go in the fridge and I'll use that within the next day or two, two for something. I do like pastry. Um, don't eat anything including raw flour because it is a raw ingredient. It can contain, I don't know, stuff. Don't be mean. Yeah, that'll work. I do like birds. I do like birds. I um, I have this hummingbird feeder that's actually sitting on my counter right next to my camera. And I've been debating whether or not I want to refill it. I think I probably should. And then just make sure that the little moat section of it is filled with water so the ants don't get it again. I just need to like be real, like check on it a lot. So that the, um, I need to check on it a lot so that the water doesn't like evaporate and dry out so the ants can get there because that's not their sugar. That's for the birdies. If I wanted to maintain ants, I would have an ant farm. And that would be also very cool, but it would be done in a controlled manner that does not involve them all over my window. Okay, and that one can go in the fridge. That went pretty good so far, actually. Of all the times that we've done pie crust on this channel, not bad, not bad, off to a good start. So we can do some dishes, and then we can kind of talk about our next steps. That's gonna have to chill for a while, and then once it's done chilling, we can roll it out, put it in our nine inch pie pan, and we're gonna blind bake it because we're adding a fairly liquid filling to it. So we wanna pre-cook the crust a little bit before we get the filling in there. Don't mind me, I'm gross. <laughs> I'm checking to make sure it's not too salty. Not that there's anything I can do if it is, but it's not too salty. It's got a little bit of salt bite to it, but not too bad. Okay, let's throw this in the sink. We can make some tea. That will definitely make me warmer than I already am, but I, I like tea enough that it's kind of worth the suffering. Um, I have iced coffee, I think, actually. Yeah, I have, like, that's still about a uh, yay much iced coffee. It smells okay. I'm kind of in the mood for tea. Make sure I'm not just dropping oat milk everywhere. This goes up here. Uh, this one just had water. We can just rinse that. I missed a sub. Oh, thank you. Uh, Valkyrie Uther with a nine-month resub. Nine amazing months. Keep up the great work, Hazel. Aw, oh, thanks. Mitosis, yes. Domitosis. See, we're having fun. Okay. I am 100% going to run out of wind in like an hour <laughs> and get really cranky and just like, I'll, I'm gonna look at like the top of my meringue and just be like, it's not right. And I'm just gonna cry. But right now I feel great. <laughs> I wear myself out on baking streams. I don't know what it is about standing. You'd think I'd be able to do it. I can do it. I can go for a hike. I'm not somebody that's just going to collapse if you take me outside. It's just something about streaming while standing that just wrecks me. But we have a stool, so we can we can perch um, and chat and make some tea and talk through our next steps because we are going to want to put some thought into the timing because we want to put the curd, the finished filling, in the crust while the crust is still kind of warm from being baked. And we're going to want to put the meringue on top of the filling before that we don't want to let that sit too long either we want those things to be done not like in immediate succession but within a reasonable frame of time frame so that will take some consideration but we have some time because we're gonna have to par bake it or blind bake it 400 degrees for like 10 minutes and that's gonna take a while to heat up and I'm already like dreading turning the oven on I replaced my dish gloves recently and these ones are like so long <laughs> they're actually almost a little too long like I have a pretty good wingspan and these go right up to my elbow in a way that kind of like pokes at your elbows a little bit, but it means that it's very hard to get watered down them, which is just the worst thing ever. <sighs> Actually, well, there, there are probably worse things, but at the time <laughs> when you're using dish gloves and the bargain that you made with the dish glove demon was that I will look kind of silly and people will make fun of me in exchange for keeping my hands dry 
to protect my skin and nails and whatever, and also just because I am braver about grabbing gross things when I'm wearing gloves. And sometimes doing the dishes or cleaning just means grabbing gross things. So that's the bargain you make. And then when the world cheats and just gives you a wet hand inside of your glove, that's just game over, man. That's <sighs> Negotiations have broken down at that point. Mm. Iced coffee, a wonderful invention. Uh, not sure what to do about ants. Had a landlady that sprinkled something, didn't do much good. Yeah, they're gone now. Well, actually, there's, there's, they're kind of in one of my plants, but it lives outside, so I'm not overly concerned about it. I'm never bringing that one inside. Um, there's people, I mentioned this on yesterday's stream, and people give me a lot of really good suggestions. So I think what I'm going to do is just try it normally, because the, the design of the feeder, it like sits on the window, and then this thing is a moat, and then the, the, wa the food sits in the middle. So theoretically, the ants can't get to the food as long as there's water in the moat, because they don't like swim good. So as long as the water stays in it, it should be fine. It's just that it dries in like an instant. Um, especially if it's windy, like the wind will kind of splash it out of the thing and then the heat will take, take, take care of the rest of it. I uh, miss her baking his naked stream, <laughs> rip him in the wrong place. Mm. I feel like there are probably, well actually I have no idea, I haven't really gone looking. I know that, and this is not something that I do or plan to do, but I know that some people, like some adult performers, will do different types of live streams. And I wonder if they've really fully explored the possibilities of doing different types of like normal streams, but like naked, you know? Um, I'm sure that depending on what it is that you're doing, there are different health and safety things to consider. Uh, you know, with baking, there's various, <laughs> you know, there's some amount of safety involved in wearing your clothes. But like, they have in um, the Pacific Northwest in some places, they have these coffee stands that um, have very scantily clad lovely ladies serving you coffee. Like, very scantily clad lovely ladies serving you coffee. And, um, and I feel like there's probably a streaming market for that. Not for me, but it's for somebody. <laughs> I don't got a problem with it. <sighs> uh, let's see. Wowhead just posted new pets. There's new squirrel models. You should react to them. Ooh, new squirrel models. I was reading through the blue posts that they put out. They put out one on spell variation. They put out one on pet changes. And then the third one must not have been very interesting because I forgot about it. But, uh, oh, PVP trinkets, actually. No, that, that was actually kind of a cool one. Um, but I haven't seen all the models except for the one that WoW had tweeted. They had like a like a, like an Arden wieldy frog mount. Um, that was kind of, it had like a mask on it. It was very sort of Zelda. It was pretty neat. Very Korok, I think. A very Korok kind of style mask. All right, big clean bowl. And then I'm going to wipe down my counter for the uh, second time of like 35. <laughs> to keep it from getting crazy messy if you just like reset it now and then you know all right ah! sorry 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 i got spooked that was my mic cable just got caught in the thing all right i'm gonna pull up a chair and i'm gonna sit my butt down and i'm gonna refer to my recipe and figure out what's next we have at least 20 more minutes of the pie dough chilling in the freezer before i'm allowed to do anything with it and i need to kind of figure out how long i'm expecting these next steps to take me. I also have no idea how long today's stream is going to be. Typically baking streams go anywhere from like an hour 25 to like two and a half. But I finally fixed the problem where my camera would auto off, hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, you may have noticed this camera the camera quality is actually downgraded a little bit from last baking stream. Uh, that is my bad. It's not that I don't have the other camera, it's that it's now set up so beautifully <laughs> in the other room for like regular streaming and video recording, I really don't want to move it. <laughs> it took me so long to get it there, and I mean, I'd have to mess with a bunch of settings. And I still had this one, which I used to stream with. So I figure for one stream a month, we can probably deal with this one, which is still a very nice camera, right? Like, it's not a webcam. We're, we're going to be fine. Oh, all right. Um, oh, I can't read. <laughs> My glasses are not good enough. I need this a little closer. There we go. OK. I never thought of Night Fae as Koroks, but now I love Night Fae even more. Debating where to shove my RP characters into what covenant. Love lemon meringue pie, but I haven't made it in many, many years. I'm trying to think. I must have had a lemon meringue pie in my life. I must have. I don't know where, though. Nobody that I know makes it. It's not a very common thing to buy because, like, meringue is kind of, it doesn't sit great. 
I don't know when I would have had it. It looks good. <laughs> it's always looked nice. Uh, let's see. Tips for first time tattoo. Make sure that you have unscented moisturizer ready at home because you're going to be moisturizing it fairly often throughout your first couple weeks of having it. Um, prepare to be kind of itchy later. You know, playing some WoW can help take your mind off of it. Uh, if I think, especially if it's going to be a long appointment, it might not hurt to bring a pair of headphones or like earpods or something. So you can just throw on like an audiobook or like a podcast or something, unless you're very chatty, in which case you might want to talk to your artist. Um, I'm awkward and if they're long, I'd rather just kind of tune out. Mm, I wouldn't worry too much about the, the pain of it. It's going to hurt, but like it's going to be fine and it's going to be worth it. So there's <laughs> worrying about it is only really going to make it worse and it's going to be fine. <sighs> yeah, I am doing all craft tomorrow. I found out um, they announced raid testing like the day after I'd committed to that, but I can't flake on them twice. So I needed to, um, I'm just really hoping, uh, and this is a very selfish thing for me to hope. I kind of hope that the first round of raid testing, which is tomorrow at one, is like such a mess that they have to do it again fairly soon because I'm not going to be able to go. Um, and I don't have, I don't have anybody else that can do it for me. But it's just the first round of raid testing. They almost always test bosses at least twice. I'm sure I will still get footage. It is not the end of the world. And there's no guarantee that I'm going to be able to get into a group even if I have the time. Um, there's a second round of testing for different bosses on Friday. And I don't even know who I'm going to play with. My old raid testing groups are not in beta. Uh, remember, yeah, smack instead of scratch it if you have to when it gets itchy. Definitely don't scratch it. My nanny makes lots of lemon meringue pie, but she uses a filling mix. I was not aware she cheats until now. I, 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 I love that. I enjoy that. I feel like I can kind of relate. I have a grandmother that mostly makes things from scratch, but like if you ever caught her using a box mix, she would just like, like, so what? <laughs> you still ate the cake, didn't you? Um, all right. So pie crust is off to a good start. Our next step for that, once it's done chilling, will be to roll it, um, pre-bake it. So once it's, um, once that's done, I'm going to Preheat the oven to 400 degrees um, so it can kind of preheat while I'm rolling out the dough. Maybe I'll preheat it a little bit early and then we're going to blind bake it. So the lemon filling, we're going to take five eggs and we need to separate them. So what I was told online is I want to separate the eggs while they're cold, but then let the separate parts come to room temperature because I'm going to want room temperature yolks for the, for the lemon curd thing and I'm going to want room temperature whites later for the meringue. So I can probably separate the eggs now. Um, and to give them some time to come up to temperature because they're not going to like go off in like an hour. But um, yeah, so we're going to separate some eggs. <sighs> For the filling, we're going to whisk the eggs together or the yolks together. And then in a saucepan, we're going to combine some sugar, cornstarch, salt with the lemon juice, lemon zest, and water. So I actually just have a lemons which are back there somewhere. So I'm going to need to extract half a cup of lemon juice from these lemons, as well as a couple teaspoons of zest. I do not have a lemon zester. I'm just gonna kinda go at it with my finest cheese grater and hope for the best. It's always worked well enough for me. Mm, and then the mixture will be thin and cloudy and it'll eventually thicken and bubble. Once it's thickened, we're gonna, redu we're gonna reduce the heat to low, temper the egg yolks with the stuff and then put it back in. And then we're going to, at that point, wanna have the crushed parsley baked. So I can probably prep some stuff now I don't think there's any particular time sensitivity on separating the eggs or measuring like my sugar, cornstarch, salt, and then like juicing my lemon, getting the lemon juice and zest all together. So I can probably start preparing those ingredients so that when I do get to putting them together, it's not going to take so crazy long. Um, and then basically I'm pretty sure once I'm done that, I'm gonna just keep the eggs actually in the stand mixer bowl because later we're gonna be whipping them into meringue. And we want to start the meringue as soon as we're done the filling. So right now, I think what I'm going to do is just start, start, maybe I want to make a cup of tea first. It's a good time for a cup of tea because I don't think I'm going to have a lot of time to stop once I've started this, aside from just the preparation, which is going to be measuring the stuff for the filling, juicing the lemon, separating the eggs. Hmm. Do you have a microplane? No. <laughs> I understand after looking at that word for a few seconds that you probably mean some kind of tool, possibly like a very thin peeler of some sort, but all I can see is a tiny airplane. Uh, if you can make lemon meringue pie, you can make any pie you can think of. We've done a handful of pies on stream. We've done an apple pie, we've done cherry pie, we've done berry pies and tarts. 
mostly just because I very much like pie, so I would like to be able to make it because, I, in my opinion, pie is, is leagues better than cake. But it always comes out... The crust is always like a 7 out of 10, maybe 8 out of 10. I have a good feeling about this one, usually pretty good. The filling, I think, I usually get the flavors okay because that's not that hard. You throw sugar and spices in it and congratulations, you made pie filling. But the, um, the consistency of the filling, that's the real kicker. I've made a lot of soupy pies where they just didn't come together enough. And I made at least one rubber pie where it came together far too much. So that I think is going to be the real tripping point, especially because with the lemon meringue pie, the filling consistency is such a... I don't think it's especially tricky, but I think it could definitely be tricky for me. So I'm gonna make some tea. Um, also, I can probably switch our, I can probably switch our view because we don't really need that camera for now. Okay, oh, my kettle is just like tucked behind my web camera. I may or may not uh, knock this over. I'm gonna have to move this. I don't wanna like steam my camera. <laughs> all right, uh, this is altogether too fancy of a kettle to just boil water, which is what I do nine times out of 10. But I like that it has different options for when I make um, other types of tea, which I used to and may do again one day. <laughs> Lately, it's been a lot of black tea because sometimes you just get in a mood for something. Uh, the glare in the refrigerator is painful. Yeah, there's not a lot I can do about it unless I like tack up a cloth or something there. Um, I originally got the magnets to try to help a little bit. We can kind of like try to position them in the middle of it to shake it up a little bit, but there's, um, there's not a ton. I mean, I guess I can turn this one off actually. So that's gonna make me a little bit dark, but it will help with the glare a little bit. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Streaming involves trade-offs, and yeah, I don't always know which one is the way around. If it's actually hurting you, then I should probably keep it off. Let's see. Uh, let me turn it down, we can compromise. There we go. Okay, that's gonna be water. I mean, it is water, but it's gonna be warmer water than it is right now. I got, what do I wanna use? I wanna use one of my new ones. Um, I got like a box of, of uh, just uh, Ceylon India black tea from Harney, and I think I'm gonna use some of this. Well, am I? Yes, yes I am. Yeah, I'm in the mood for that, okay. I'm gonna make a nice pot of black tea, and I guess I'm gonna separate some eggs. We're gonna put the whites in the stand mixer bowl, and I'm going to set the yolks aside. Probably, actually, I could probably put the yolks in this, because we're gonna be doing some pouring of them and mixing of them when we're tempering them. So I'm probably gonna do that in this. Let me get this dry. Hmm. Electric kettles are amazing. It's shocking to me, based on the small sample size of American homes that I've visited since living here, how like nobody has electric kettles. I guess they just don't really make tea often, but you know, you can use it for tea. You can also just boil water really quickly for anything else you need hot water for. And uh, I guess they just don't drink tea. They just make coffee. They like their coffee here. And I don't hate coffee, I also like coffee, but like, <laughs> it's not a good day if I haven't had like three different types of tea. I'm so spoiled here. I have far too much freedom to just do whatever I want and it's let me get really weird. Okay, five eggs, yolks in this one, whites in this one. And I read that it's very important for meringues to make sure that your bowl is completely clean. Um, which this one is, because you don't want any fat or anything extra in there, otherwise the whites won't whip up correctly. So we're just gonna make sure that this is sparkling, which it looks pretty good. Uh, and it can soup in electric kettles. Growing up, I would do um, quick oats in them. I would, or not in the kettle, but I would boil water in the kettle to make quick oats or to make ramen. Um, we had an electric kettle in my work break room at my last retail job and I used it like every single day to make some kind of hot food for lunch because cold food is just depressing sometimes. Okay, uh, wish me luck with the whole egg thing. I am not great at this and I never have been. Um, we're gonna crack them into here. I know you're supposed to crack them in a hard surface but that just doesn't work for me. So I'm just gonna live my life. I gotta wash my hands actually, one more time. Oh, like in the kettle. How do you clean? I mean, I guess if you can clean it, I, <laughs> I've only ever seen people putting like food or like the final product, like I've seen people brewing tea in the kettle and then, but usually it's like as the punchline of some kind of a joke on a sitcom of somebody being like, no, 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 you, you make it in the teapot. <laughs> uh, we have electric kettles my whole life, but the kettle on was almost a universal greeting when entering someone's home. My home, um, 
Sounds like my sounds like my mom's place. My home growing up was uh, we had a, a stovetop kettle um, for the longest time, just like one of those whistling ones. And I used it for to make tea growing up for years and years. And I didn't really know <laughs> about electric kettles at that time because I just used the stovetop one. But it took so much longer to heat up, and then it was um, it took so long to heat up, and then it whistled like murder. Like it was so shrill. And you know, obviously that's to get you to go like get it, but we would learn to like subconsciously tell when the pitch of the hot water sound had risen to such a level that you knew it was gonna whistle soon. And it would like spark this primal urge in you to get up and like book it to the kettle to get it off the heat before it whistled because it was so painfully loud that you didn't want that to happen in the first place. It was so much. All right, egg one. Off to a good start. We just really don't want to break any of these yolks. Really don't want to break a yolk. Um, I should probably actually get a separate dish just in case I do break a yolk. So that, because if I break a yolk in like four existing pristine egg whites, I'm gonna have to throw them out and start over. So I should probably be doing this not over the egg white bowl. We should get us an intermediate egg white receptacle is what we need here. Um, I won't give you a close up on this and that's fine because separating eggs is kind of gross. All right. And then there's one yolk. So I guess I'm just gonna use like a, like a soup bowl. Uh, hi, Hazel, mic setup, I don't like my own. I mean, this microphone is just a, I have like a mic pack on my butt and then I've got a, um, a lapel mic down here, which actually I should probably move to the center because usually whenever I'm like looking down or turning around, it gets like too loud. And this is not the most cute way to, or to hide it, but it makes it so that it's less um, volume swingy. Eh, we'll see about that. Okay, so yeah, this is just a, a mic pack. Um, at my desk, I have a Rode NT1A that I use. I also like the Blue Yetis though. Okay, T, and then intermediate egg white receptacle. Okay. Use one of those. Uh, usually if I'm trying hard with tea, I will kind of like rinse the pot a little bit with some hot water just to preheat it. If you're trying really hard, you can preheat the pot by pouring boiling water into it for a few minutes first. And what that does is it means you're not gonna drop the temperature of your tea instantly once you pour your hot water in there so that it, it steeps at a higher temperature. Because for black teas, you really wanna steep it quite hot. It'll kind of get sad if it's steeping too cool. So that's what preheating the pot's about. And this is my compromise version. Sometimes I just whack it in there and just live my life. <laughs> Especially if you're just making like a smaller amount of it. Like, does it really matter? I mean, it does, but. All right, so we're gonna, I'm gonna steep that for like We'll start with three minutes. I might do an extra one. Usually I go for like four on black teas these days. Okay, nice bowl. So that was egg white number one. And luckily because we are saving the yolks, I, can, I don't have to remember how many. I can just count them based on the yolks here as long as I don't break those. So here's two. So I'm gonna open them vertically so that I can really carefully choose what side of shell I want to tip the egg out of. There we go. That's another successful one. That's number two. And now I have two hands handy to kind of pass it in between. This really does look like a jellyfish. I hate this a lot, um, but it's what needs to be done. There's two. I'm just gonna finish this because my hands are uh, cursed and I need to <laughs> just get this done so that I can clean them and move on with my life. Whoa, whoa, that was a risky one. Okay, this is number three. So far, so good. And then we'll whack that goo in there. Three, two more. It's a good thing I have a lot of eggs. I keep them around for baking. I don't really use them for anything else lately. I could make a quiche. I do have that extra pie shell, but what if I wanna make like a fruit pie? What if I want to make like a tart? There's a bloodberry tart recipe, which is just like a mixed berry tart in the WoW cookbook. It's really good. All right, there we go. Four, one more. Oh, I can feel the egg white kind of hardening on my thumb. And I am not a fan of that. Okay. There we go. Ah! All right, that's fine. And... Whoop, boop, 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 whoop. Whoop, 
Uh, oh, oh gosh, okay. Woo, we're good. Cool, okay. Five. And then we can decrease my hands. <sighs> How do you separate them? So once I've got the egg cracked and I'm, con I'm convinced that I haven't just like broken the yolk in the process of cracking the egg, I just kind of hold them in my hands and I'll pass it between my hands kind of like doing, doing a little bit of that action with my fingers to keep the yolk in my hand but then let the white kind of slip out between my fingers is usually my best go. Use an empty water bottle. Yeah, but then you have a water bottle filled, like covered in egg stuff. <laughs> that worked fine. Using my hands is okay for that. Okay, so those can now both come individually to room temperature because we're gonna need them both separately at room temperature. And now I think it'd probably be a good idea for me to start preheating my oven. This is going to be, well, it's not really all that cold. Um, chilled soon. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna finish my tea, or making my tea. I'm going to preheat, well, I'm, I'm gonna measure my lemon stuff. I think I'm gonna go mess up some lemons because <laughs> I need to both skin and juice some of them. We gotta get a half a cup of juice and a couple tablespoons of zest. Yeah, let's, well, no, let's measure the, before I make a mess of myself and discover all of the tiny cuts in my hands I didn't know I had, um, I betcha I've got some damage around my fingers. I need to measure like the sugar and the cornstarch and stuff for the filling. Uh, thank you for your YouTube videos. Very helpful. Thank you. It's useless as, as real. Appreciate it. Uh, apron is not Blizzard gear. No, I got this like years ago on Etsy from a seller that no longer makes them, unfortunately. I, uh, <laughs> I'm not a very good influencer because anything that I might influence somebody to buy is something they can't buy anymore. It's basically just the apron and the, um, the apron and then the, the posters in my, in my wow room. Okay. So for the filling, Aside from the egg yolks, we are going to need, uh, aside from the egg yolks and the lemons, we're going to need cornstarch, six tablespoons of cornstarch, um, 266 grams of sugar, a little bit more salt, so it's a good thing they kept that out, and then the water will happen later, and there's also another two tablespoons of butter, which I have already separa separated out, and those exist in my fridge. Um, that's that. So let me get... Uh, we're gonna basically mix in the pan because we're gonna be using a saucepan on the stove to mix the filling together to make sure it thickens to make kind of our curd situation. Um, I'm gonna do this in uh, yeah, this will be fine. I've done it in something like this, and I've also done it in like a pot, like a little, like a little. Well, I'm sure both would work. This obviously has more surface area. This has more capacity. We're gonna be using basically two cups of liquid plus the egg yolks. I'm probably gonna use this one just in case. I don't want it to get too messy. So we're gonna throw that there. We're not gonna turn it on yet, but we are going to mix in our, we're gonna measure out our sugar and our cornstarch and our salt. And then we're going to have our liquids separately because we're not gonna combine those until later. I don't wanna just have wet sugars in there. So let me get my other measure bowl here and we're gonna get a uh, 266 grams of sugar measured out and then plopped into the pot. I guess because I'm just doing it in this for now, I can just measure it literally right in here. So let's go throw that on there and then reset it, 266 grams, which is about one and a third cup. A uh, fun game that I like to play sometimes is measuring it the way that I would normally do and then seeing how close I was <laughs> to the actual grams given by the recipe. So there's about one third, 72. Sugar didn't compact quite as much as flour, so it should be pretty close. Two, three, which brings me to 219. And we're aiming for 266. So I was a little over, that was 297. So we're just gonna scoop some of this back until we get 260. Six, perfect. Okay, and then uh, six tablespoons of cornstarch. They didn't give me a grammage for that, and that's probably fine. I can just kind of uh, whack that in there. Add the cornstarch a little at a time. I'm gonna add it all in dry, um, and then whisk it into the sugar so that it's distributed, uh, because this recipe does not involve like separating liquid and then dissolving the cornstarch in it. It just has the cornstarch mixed right in together with everything. So um, if this didn't work and I was going to try the recipe again, I would probably do that, like have the cornstarch separately 
and then take a little bit of liquid out, mix it into cornstarch and then mix it in. Usually that's what I'll do. Um, back when I used to make sweet and sour sauce a lot, um, I would do it that way. So we've got one, but I'll fail at anything once by following the directions. Two, three, and this is what's going to thicken. Well, this is part of what's going to thicken. I think the eggs also help, but four to hold the filling together so it's not just soup. Five. Oh, I forgot to take my tea out. That's going to be strong. <laughs> I'll get it in a sec. And six. So I'm going to uh, whisk that together. Let me get my tea out of my poor teapot before it gets any stronger. And hopefully we remember to actually like, pour a cup of that and have some. Otherwise, I just made tea for nothing. OK. So I have a pot of sugar and cornstarch. Uh, may as well whack the salt in there as well. We've got a quarter teaspoon of salt, which is not very much. Let's get just like this thing. I would imagine it's the smallest one. Yeah, it's a quarter teaspoon right there. And that is half an hour since we put the dough in the freezer. So at this point, it's a little cold. It's nowhere near frozen, but it's definitely chilled. I'm going to preheat the oven to 400 degrees, which is where we're going to be blind baking it. And then once the oven's preheated, we can roll out the dough, get it into the dish. I'm going to have a little parchment circle on top of the dough that we'll have the pie weights on top of. And we'll bake that for 10 minutes ahead of time so that it's pre-cooked a little bit. Okay, so this is our dry sugar, cornstarch, and salt. Meringue is tough. Yeah, that's the last part. And meringue is something I don't really make. Um, I don't really mess with meringue much like ever. So if there's anything, actually, I'm, I'm really more worried about the curd than I am about the meringue, but both of them could go very wrong. Do you change your magnets just for stream? I know some people hate hang photos and such. Um, so those magnets always live on the fridge. We do usually have um, not photos, but reference material. So usually I'll have like a bit of a box from like the back of a frozen thing cut out and then put on the fridge. So I still have the directions, but I don't need to keep the box in my fridge freezer. Um, we'll have like our meal planning board where I'll write out like meal ideas and then kind of like an ongoing grocery list that we can add to and a little whiteboard that sits up there. Um, Stuff like that, but nobody needs to <laughs> look at my meal plan for the week. That's not very exciting. Okay. So that's just going to sit there. That is not, there's no heat on that. That's just existing for now. I want to say that I'm done with the salt. Am I going to need salt for the meringue? I am going to need salt for the meringue. Man, you're never done with that stuff. Okay. Uh, we're definitely done with the cornstarch. We can put this back away. This one, I think, lives back here. Perfect. And now I'm going to make a cup of tea. That's right. I made some tea. Let's have some of that. How much tea? It's uh, 347, that's early, I can have a big cup of tea. <laughs> I have to plan that based on the caffeine content of the tea and the time of the day because I am uh, very vulnerable to any kind of chemical influence on my body. Like ca caffeine will keep me up. Um, I will also get like caffeine jitters very easily and then uh, uh, alcohol the same way. Anything like that will hit me really hard. So I just can't have anything after like five, I would say. Uh, for this, I'm probably just going to need a little bit of a... There's some left in there. Okay. So I think next on our list is going to be some crimes against lemons. <laughs> I wonder if I have enough. I must. I only need to have a cup of juice, and I have, like, a bag of lemons. It's... I don't know exactly how many are in here. Three, four? I have four lemons, but they're, like, big lemons, right? We're going to be good. Oh! Came out a little funny. Okay. And I need a straw, of course, because who do I think I am? Let's see if that tea is any good. I probably should have smelled the milk first. I don't think it's bad, but uh, it did come out kind of foamy. <laughs> Ooh, that's good. Mm, that's exactly what I wanted. That's a pretty strong tea. That'll, that'll kick you in the foot, um, and then it'll go out. But like, that's good. I'm going to set that way back there so I don't like spill anything important, because that's pretty full lemons uh let's see what's good sup crap sup sup chat used to be addicted to caffeine now no more shakes but i'm completely resistant to the positive effects of caffeine i um i remember when i was a kid all the adults in my life were lamenting their own caffeine addictions and um and trying to, to get off of them they were all talked about how coffee was their one vice and i then was kind of surprised that nobody was more concerned about making sure the kids didn't start drinking caffeine because uh, 
we were all like, we, they, people didn't want us drinking coffees like kids because of growth stunting or something. But, um, you know, it was fairly accepted that as we became teenagers, we would probably start drinking tea or coffee or something. Uh-oh. Spaghetti. Uh, this is why you tuck your mic cables. I'm just going to put it back on the side. Let's just shove it in a pocket. There we go. But yeah, I, um, I know that, of course, too much of anything is not good for you. And if you're just mainlining energy drinks or like 20, 12 cups of coffee or like the really big ones with a lot of sugar in them every day, that's probably not great. But I never really saw like super concrete evidence later, um, the same way that you do for like, you know, fatty foods or anything like that, that says that it's going to like absolutely ruin your life. So I guess I just don't worry about it too much as long as I'm not, you know, slowly drinking more and more and more and more and more. Lemons. Okay, so I need to isolate half a cup of lemon juice and two teaspoons. So not, not even tablespoons, two teaspoons of lemon zest. So let's open up this bag and I'm going to need to slice them. I'm going to zest them first. Well, I'm probably actually only going to need to zest one. So let's wash it first, get the wax off it. That's why we give babies coffee here in Costa Rica. Everyone's tolerant from the start. Drinking coffee since I was like three, I'm still 5'10". Yeah, I don't know how much truth there is to the growth stunting thing. That was just kind of the, the wisdom that was going around at the time as to why they didn't want kids drinking uh, caffeine at that age. I, uh, I'm sure you could look through my childhood diet and find all kinds of reasons why I turned out tall, but you could also just look at my father who's just tall and be like, well, <laughs> that's probably it. Uh, my mom's not short either, actually. I think my mom is just like maybe like an inch under my height. She's like 5'9 or so, maybe 5'8". Um, so just tall family, you know? Okay, and uh, that's a perfectly good size. I am going to kind of eyeball the, um, the, the zest because I don't feel like accurately measuring lemon dust, you know, lemon shavings, lemon bits, and uh, it's gonna be fine. So what I'm basically looking for here is my other cheese grater because I know it has one side to it that might actually be a proper zester. I don't know, it didn't come labeled, there it is. Um, it's like this one that looks like a lot of tiny little duck mouths, right? And they're like ouchy and they're impossible to clean. That's, that's it, right? I'm just gonna um, give you a nice little massage. And then just kind of rotate it to make sure I'm getting all that lovely yellow part. It smells very good. And let me stick a knife up in there and see if I've made anything happen or if I've just angered my lemon. All right, something's happening, let's keep going. I'm always self-conscious whenever I watch baking stream VODs back that my posture is very bad and I'm all like, oh, just stand up better and put your shoulders back and fix your neck and don't look like a weird stork. But then it's hard when you're working on something like this because the counter is like way down here. It's like below hip height on me. And you kind of got to lean over it a little bit. All right, I think it's getting kind of slippery. How are we doing? So, lovely. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it doesn't look lovely, but it smells amazing. I would call that like a third teaspoon. I'm probably going to need to do all these lemons. I don't want to skimp out in the lemon zest because it lends so much delightful lemon flavor, you know? Okay. I can already tell I have some uh, slightly painful spots on the back of this hand, hand where this lemon juice is going to get me. I think like a, a microscopic fleck of it jumped onto my hand. I'm like, oh, I'm going to feel that. I have um, eczema or eczema, depending on who you are and how you say it, on the back of my hands, like along the back of my thumb. And usually it's not so bad, but all the hand washing has really angered it. <laughs> and it is not going to be happy with this. All right, how are we doing? So I'm making my nice little pile of lemon goo. Uh, I'm sure there's also a lot on this side of the thing. I just don't know how on earth you're supposed to get the zest off of this side of the thing. <sighs> Tall and self-conscious about the tilt of my neck. It's mostly, I'm fine until I see myself on camera from angles that I'm not used to, which might just be because I'm not used to it. But I definitely could stand to have some better posture. All right, let's, let's wash another lemon and have at it. Traconium, thank you very much for the bits. Hi, Hazel. 
ever made, oh, I have no idea how to say that. I'm gonna go with pepernoos or pepper nuts for Christmas. No, not once. Um, I don't know if I've ever even heard of that. COVID's made my eczema go crazy too. I thought I like, I had really bad eczema, like right here on both hands when I was a teenager. It was awful because I would scratch it. I like knew better, but I just didn't care at that age or something. So I would scratch it, which makes it worse, of course, as you know. And then, um, and then I thought I had grown out of it. I thought I was free because like through my early twenties, it was like completely gone. I'm like, maybe there's just like some Canadian soap or something. And you know, maybe this is behind me, but uh, it's not gone. It was just sleeping. It's back. At least it's not anywhere else. Okay, so the oven's preheated, which means that once I'm finished zesting, I can probably roll out the dough and get that blind, well, I don't wanna blind bake the dough too early because I don't want the pre-cooked dough to cool down too much before I get the stuff done. So I'm gonna finish murdering my lemons and then I'm going to, and then I'm going to uh, set up the crust to blind bake is the plan here. These are really slippery. <laughs> okay, how are we doing? Like, stuff is happening, it's just not that much. And they want two teaspoons, which is like a pretty considerable amount of zest. It's probably because I'm using the wrong tool. Oh, you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give up on that weird little duckbill thing and I'm just gonna go in with a regular tiny grater. Um, this may get like a tiny little bit more of the white, which you don't want because it's bitter. But you know what, like, the baking gods can bite me, it's fine. <laughs> as long as I'm not stressing one spot too much. What I need right now is volume, you know? All right, how'd that do? That's, that's what we're talking about, that's more like it. That's still yellow. There we go. One more lemon's worth of that and we should be all good. Maybe two more lemons, maybe I'll just do them all. I pronounce it eggsama. Yeah, I've heard eczema and I've heard eczema. I've never heard eczema, or I guess eczema, eczema, yeah. I wonder if that's a Canadian thing, because I've seen other Canadians calling it eczema as well. Uh, pepper nuts are amazing, definitely a Northern European thing though. What would I have to do to one day, I'm feeling like maybe, maybe I'm like in my late 30s, 40s, maybe early 50s to like go to a different country, like a, like a Northern European country for the holidays and just have like a nice family, just like have me over for just like a Christmas, you know? Like, I think it would be so lovely to experience Christmas traditions and to contribute to them other than my own, which I don't really have many of, especially right now when I can't go home. But like, you know, <laughs> you gotta find a nice family willing to adopt you for a year. Or not a whole year, but like a Christmas, you know? I want to help somebody's grandma with dishes. I was always really uncomfortable at my own family. It was pretty, pretty common um, at holiday times. There would be a lot of cooking going on. My grandmother would do most of the cooking and the other ladies that came over, like the aunts and cousins, whatever, would all kind of help. And all the ladies would also help with um, dishes and whatnot. And I was always very uncomfortable because I didn't really know where things went for some reason. And I didn't want to like put away dishes or like, it was hard for, it was hard. I didn't really understand how to help out in somebody else's kitchen. I didn't really understand the concept that she would probably delegate to me. Um, I now know that I can just ask for a job and I will get one. But at the time I'm like, I don't know what to do. So I would just like sit with like my uncles and grandfather and stuff and then be like, well, um, I've joined the lazy side of the equation. I don't really know what that was about, but I feel like that's not terribly uncommon. So here's what we're looking at for zest. I feel like that is a significant amount. It is probably two tablespoons worth, uh, or two teaspoons worth rather. Well, I mean, I have one more lemon. I don't want this one to feel left out. I may as well. Uh, I haven't seen a poggers for 10 minutes. This is madness. We don't have a huge emote culture over here. We mostly use words. <laughs> not that emotes are, are bad or that they're not words. Um, I think that Poggers is quite fun. I find myself mostly using it not on Twitch. Like a friend will like link me a screenshot of something they got in WoW and then you'll send them like a Poggers back even though the emote does not show up. I mean, it might if you had the right like discords or whatever, but uh, <laughs> actually on Twitch, not as much. All right, you can be skinned just like your buddies. This smells good already. Even if this pie is awful, at least I will have enjoyed some lovely lemon perfume. <laughs> 
I really like nice smelling things. And I know that's not a hot take. I feel like that's very normal for humans to like things that smell nice. But like, you know, makes things better sometimes. I stepped outside today. I was taking my dog outside. Oh, and the air is just so nice right now. Like I know it's not a great time to be going out, at least not into crowded areas. Um, fine to go outside as long as you can stay distanced, but it just, it smells like summer out there. There's like warm summer air breeze and something about it is just hitting really different this year. And I just like, I know I have, I'm having fun. This is a wonderful job to have. I'm very excited to be here and I'm very grateful I get to do this. But there was a tiny part of me that was like, oh, let's just go take a, let's just go like have a picnic. Like I just want to go like to a cabin and then just like have some tea and do some crossword puzzles or something. Not crosswords, I hate crosswords. Word searches, those are more like it. Um, on, on a dock somewhere, like, I, I would be so on board. It just smells so nice. But you know, there will be more summers. And maybe one day I will have nailed my work-life balance to the point that any time that I'm taking off, I can like really plan and enjoy, you know, maybe I can actually go on a vacation. I haven't done that in a long time. Okay, so there's my lemon zest. Now I need to pre-measure out half a cup of lemon juice and I've already used my only small liquid measure. So I guess what I need to do, I don't know what I need to do, <laughs> to be honest with you. Armiston, thank you very much for the seven month resub. Enjoying my sub, thanks for the excellent channel. Aw, shucks. I'm glad that you, I'm glad whenever I can avoid <laughs> sub regret, that's usually a good thing. Mm. In Denmark, there are programs whose, where family of foreigners spend Christmas with them. Oh, okay. I feel like I'm hoping that there, I'm enjoying this phase of my life, but I also hope that there are additional phases of my life where I get to try new things like that. Because right now that whole concept seems so unfathomable, unfathomable to me, like going somewhere and like <laughs> meeting people. But I would like to do it eventually. I don't, I just need to get braver and also get my, my workflow under control. And I don't know, learn to trust a pet sitter or something. <laughs> the more fish I get, the harder that's gonna be. Gosh, I just love fish so much. I spent some time this morning and really dug in and cleaned the gravel on Ori's tank. I had been hesitant to do it because it's, he's got like that soil level under the gravel and I didn't want to kick out the soil, but I really wanted to like get the tank as clean as possible because I'm still not liking the look of his fins. And I want to try everything I can in that tank before I decide to potentially move him to a quarantine to like medicate him. I don't want to do that if I don't have to. Ooh, maybe I can do it in this. Yeah. This is like a little plastic container that goes in the bottom of that cheese grater, but it also has cut markings on it and it's clear and I can use that. I'm just gonna um, juice my lemons. Well, it's not really a bowl, is it? Oh, I'm gonna juice my lemons into a bowl and then pour them in here. I was gonna juice them into a funnel, but that sounds like a real mess. Let's not do that. Okay. Um, if I'm gonna be slicing, then you know what I'm gonna do first is, uh, and I did this last night, but usually most times I use the knife. I've got a honing rod and I'm not great at this, but essentially just like a 20 degree angle, medium amount of pressure. You're not sharpening a blade when you do this, but you're just kind of realigning an existing edge. Uh, my edge kind of sucks because I, sh I didn't sharpen it quite enough given how bad of condition the blade was in, but it's actually not bad. Um, just to make sure that we're cutting easily and that we're not dulling the edge that we already have on this $10 target knife. I'm trying to really learn how to maintain my knives with the cheap ones that I already have before I like invest in any nice knives. I would like to invest in nice knives one day, but I want to make sure I like really deserve them and will not just ruin them by sharpening them poorly. Okay, I am juicing lemons. No, yes, yes I am juicing lemons. I was gonna start that, but I'm not ready for that yet. Uh, the Yuxan, thank you very much for the brand new set. Welcome to the Squirrel Squad. What did I say I was gonna do? I was gonna use an intermediary bowl again. Um, the intermediary egg bowls, right? Let's just do that, okay. So for juicing lemons, there is a thing where you can like stab a lemon and then have its juices flow out, like those lemon juicing tools. I don't own any of those. So I'm basically just slicing the lemon into quarters and then I'm going to uh, be mean to it with my hands in such a way that it hurts me as much as the lemon because I'm gonna get lemon juice all over my hands and it's gonna hurt, but also fairly effective. So usually what I do is I just take a segment and then I like literally squeeze them because like that's kind of all you gotta do. Hey, thanks for the gift subs. 
appreciate it. Cheers. Uh, grats to everybody who got one. Some Hazel loves in chat for Yuxa. I apologize if I've said that wrong, if it's supposed to be Yuxa or, or Yusha. Uh, <laughs> taking some guesses, but thank you very much. Talking about slow lemon murder. And that's the other thing is like sometimes I'll, I'll like really get a grip on it and then you like slide my thumb down, just really pulverize that fruit and get all the juice that you can out of it. So I'm gonna, uh, oh gosh, it already hurts. I'm gonna really get in here here. <laughs> and the bowl is definitely necessary because um, it's uh, squirting in directions with velocity. Who said that baking streams weren't any fun? Oh, it hurts. <laughs> Just the teeny tiniest little like micro abrasions in your hands and I'll really show you where they are. Oh, I... there we go. All right, that's, this is, these are nice, uh, nice juicy soft lemons at least. I don't know that I'm gonna need to juice all four of them. I just wanted to have enough of them on hand. You know, you're thinking about a pie and you're like, shouldn't you need like a lot of fruit? Like whenever I'm making apple pie, I feel like I usually use more than four apples. Okay. And then I'm going to finish juicing this one lemon and then kind of see how much juice I got from that by pouring into that little measuring box thing. <sighs> Pulling the lemon seeds out of here and resisting the urge to plant them. I already have lemon trees. I don't need any more of them. <laughs> there we go. I had my first tomato. I had my first ripe tomato the other day. I posted a picture of it in the Discord as well as my Instagram story because I was like so proud. Uh, it looked really good. I, it was just like one little cherry tomato. It was perfectly ripe and I was having a bean burger for lunch. So I sliced that little cherry tomato <laughs> into little baby cherry tomato slices and then spread them over the surface of the burger. It was not enough tomato, but uh, it was doing its best and it was very tasty. Um, I should have more ready fairly soon. They're really starting to come in now. Okay. Ooh. I mean, it smells good. Um, I also have bottled lemon juice. You could save yourself a lot of time by just squirt, like measuring lemon juice from a bottle. But I feel like that's just not gonna be as tasty. It's not gonna be as yummy. All right, so how much did one lemon get me? One lemon got me about a quarter of a cup. So it looks like I'm gonna need the juice of approximately two lemons for this. Um, I've had tomatoes before that. It was just the first one that was ready from my, from my garden. And by garden, I mean balcony, but I have some tomatoes in grow bags outside on my balcony. And it was the first one that was ready this season. I got them started a little bit late, so uh, they weren't quite, they, they're just starting to be ready now, but they should continue um, ripening through the rest of, um, they should continue ripening through the rest of like the season, basically right through September. I imagine if previous year's weather patterns are anything to judge by, we're probably gonna have a pretty warm fall. I imagine that those will keep going for a while. <sighs> uh, let's see. I've been able to make a stream in such a long time. Welcome back to the live show. You are just in time. Well, uh, you're almost just in time. After I finish juicing the lemons, I'm going to be digging right into the, the dough that we have chilling in the freezer to get the, the crust all sorted out. And that's gonna be a little bit of a thing. I wonder, usually what I do is I'll dust the cutting board with um, flour so that I can roll out the dough on the cutting board and then kind of like save the counter a little bit. But my cutting board is currently soaked in lemon juice. And even if I wash it, it's not gonna be fully dry in time. So what I'm probably gonna do is just throw the board in the sink and then make like extra clean the counter, dust that, and then roll the dough out right in the counter. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. And I've certainly cleaned it enough times today. We should be good. All right. Mm. I kind of want to eat a tiny piece of lemon, but I feel like I shouldn't. It's probably bad for my teeth. Too acidic. Oh. And also it smells good, but I imagine it would taste really sour. I had um, a blackberry. There are some fresh wild blackberries growing alongside a trail I was at last weekend. And, uh, and they were just starting to get ripe. So I had one. And uh, the, first, the, first, the first crop of the season is definitely, definitely pretty tart. It was... Uh, Face changing for sure. All right, so that puts us just under a half a cup. I'm gonna juice just a little bit more directly into this thing, just because I don't want to, um, I don't wanna underdo the lemon juice. I wanna go directly, exactly for half. So let's just take one more piece here. I should probably strain it, yeah? I should probably um, run it through like a, it's got a bunch of pulp in it. And I feel like that's not the end of the world, but just in case, you know, the recipe doesn't call for pulpy lemon juice. So let's just do 
a good amount of it, and then I'm going to strain it. I have a, a little sifter. I did not get any in any of my eye, but I definitely got it all over my shirt. <laughs> That's what aprons are for. Uh, just to get any solids or like rogue lemon seeds out of this stuff. So we're going to do a little over because I imagine the volume is partially being taken up by pulp. And then I'm going to strain that into a bowl and remeasure it. So basically, we're currently sitting at just over half a cup. I'm gonna ooh, rinse the lemon juice off my hands. Can I gift you a lemon juicer? I don't want to own kitchen appliances that I'm only going to use once a year. I never have to juice lemons. Usually if it's, um, if I'm just putting a little lemon juice in something I'm cooking, I don't care enough to actually buy lemons. So then I'll just use like the garbage juice that you get in a bottle. It's just for this. And I just don't have that much cupboard space. Like whenever I get a thing, I have to choose another thing to not have anymore so that I can actually use my drawers. There's nothing I hate more than like a tool drawer that won't open because I've just shoved too many things in it that I'm not even using. So we're going to, it is a nice thought though. There we go. And then that strains out. We, we, we took some pulp out of there and leaves us with some lovely lemon juice. And if I pour that back into this thing, that is exactly half a cup perfect. So I'm going to set that aside over here. We're going to use it later and uh, clean up our workspace a little bit. And then we're going to roll out the dough for and get the blind baking started. So I guess I'm just going to put the second half a lemon in the fridge again. I don't know what I'm going to use the rest of it for, but I'll, I will either think of something or I won't. And then I will look at it again in a week and go, oh, I should probably throw that out. But you know, we should give it a chance. <laughs> we should give it a chance for me to think of something I want to put it on. Maybe I'll garnish some tea with it. Maybe I'll garnish some iced tea with some fresh lemons. That would be fancy. Okay. All right. Oy. Carnage, carnage, lemon carnage. So there's our zest right next to our juice. That took longer than I thought it was going to. If I had compost, I would do that, but I don't, so I can't. And dishes in the sink. I will do those dishes probably once. Oh, maybe I should do them now. As soon as I get the, um, as soon as I get the crust out of the freezer, my, basically my timer for the rest of it has all begun because I can't let any one thing sit too long once it's ready. So I might do some dishes now just to kind of clear up my space. I have so many containers like filled with bits of things. I have egg whites and then egg yolks and then my lemon juice and then my lemon zest and then my salt and sugar and cornstarch in that thing on the stove. Everything is just in so many different pieces. Okay, so this one will go away in here. I always want to put away the dry dishes so that you can just like get them wet. Nice thing about uh, 80 degree weather is that stuff dries real quick. It's great. How many lemons have to be sacrificed upon a lemon meringue altar? Uh, three and a half so far is our total count. Uh, there's this poor boy, which was zested but not sliced. So I can probably just put that one back and figure out something else to do with him. <sighs> Tea break. Just got the Stratholme now, Gratz Plasma Unicorn. What about a nice glass juicer? It's going to take up the same amount of space as a plastic one. I still don't have anywhere to put it. <sighs> I would say that one day I will have a kitchen with enough storage space that I can have kind of specialty utensils for everything, but that's not really how I want to live. I would rather only keep things for tasks that I do like at least once a week or maybe once a month and then have, um, and then just like figure it out the rest of the time. Like I got the lemons juice, it was fine, it worked out. Uh, I just don't do it very often. I feel like the last time I had to juice lemons was over a year ago. Uh, wait for a bit, is it already in the oven? No, not yet. Um, that's next though. I'm just cleaning up a little bit. I'm gonna clean up the counter so that I can roll the crust out on the counter. And then we're going to get the blind baking started. It is an hour and 15 already, and we haven't even started. I mean, I've got a lot of things measured. I think the second half of this is going to go a lot faster because of how, how pre-prepared many of our supplies are. I think that will help things move smoothly once we start the second half. I just don't want to like realize halfway through that I need to uh, 
then I need to like juice a bunch of lemons, but I still, I already like combined my egg whites with, or my egg yolks with my sugar or whatever. Um, I would rather be prepared as a, a wonderful, a, well, a wonderfully charismatic lion once said. I don't think he was a very good lion, but you know, he had the tunes. <gasps> Speaking of which, um, what should I watch on Disney Plus? I, we, we got Disney Plus and that's been my new favorite way of procrastinating when I know I should get back up and do more work after dinner, but I don't want to move. Uh, we watched Hamilton. We watched, last night I put on Brave. I had never seen it. I remembered seeing Brave advertising in Subway sandwich restaurants around like 2012, 2013, you know, when the movie came out. And uh, I remember thinking, that looks kind of cute, but like I didn't have, I didn't really go to movies at the time. I still don't. And uh, I was not really buying movies digitally and they weren't really on streaming yet. I was really only watching things I could stream. So I just never saw it. And then I watched it yesterday and it was okay. It wasn't my favorite Disney movie, but it was cute enough. Uh, I've seen Moana like six times and I'm probably gonna watch it again. Basically what I was doing was I was just tabbing through the Disney Plus catalog and just adding things to my watch list that I've already seen that I know that I like. Like, I want to watch Tangled again. I want to watch a bunch of the Disney classics again. Um, I wanted to watch Moana for, like, the seventh time. Uh, the new Lion King movie, I don't know if it's going to be any good. Basically, what I heard about it is that it's the old Lion King movie, but in high def. But it's been long enough since I've seen the old Lion King movie that I might enjoy it. And I do enjoy John Oliver, so, you know. <laughs> as, as Zazu, probably fine. All right, so we're just making sure that we have a nice, clean workspace for rolling out this dough. I'm gonna clean it and I'm probably actually gonna take a paper towel just to make sure it's super dry so that I'm not immediately making like flour clumps on my counter. Uh. Oh yeah, Inside Out, I saw Inside Out when it was new and I would like to see it again because it was adorable, it was so cute. <sighs> uh, live action Lion King, Sealed Lion King and High Def with Less Heart. Is it still worth watching though? Would you, would you say just like hard skip it? I don't have to pay anything extra to see it now. Um, what was the other one? Homeward Bound. I saw Homeward Bound on there and I was like, oh, I gotta watch that again. I gotta, I'm gonna ruin my childhood by rewatching all the movies that I loved back then and then realizing they probably weren't that good. But you know, you have them all on VHS and like as a kid kid, we didn't really have cable. We just had our VHSs. So I would watch the same Disney movies over and over and over and over again. And, uh, and I liked them a lot, <laughs> you know? What have I stepped on? Oh, that's a lemon seed. Uh, uh, 90s X-Men animated series. Zootopia. Zootopia was ruined for me by a YouTube channel called Editing is Everything that edited together a Zootopia trailer but in the style of Fifty Shades of Grey. And I don't think I can watch that movie now. <laughs> I don't care what it's actually about. <laughs> mm. I wanted to do another Pirates of the Caribbean uh, rewatch. I feel like Oh, also Toy Story. Um, I never saw the, the last two Toy Stories, three and four, and I heard that four was actually really good. So now I kind of want to watch them all from the start, <laughs> but like, I really don't have time for this. Okay, I'm gonna wash my hands. We're gonna roll out some dough. Let's get everything ready. The dough is chilling in the freezer. The pie crust pan is already over there. We're just gonna put the crust directly in the pan. We don't grease it or anything like that. That's for cake. Um, but we will actually have a piece of parchment ready to have on top of it to separate the pie weights. Ow. Um, so I'm basically just gonna uh, freehand slice a little uh, circle of parchment to kind of fit, not even a circle necessarily. That'll we'll probably do, just to have our, our pie weights on top of. Uh, you don't have to use pie weights, of course. You can use like dried beans or there's rice or stuff, but I already have pie weights, so I may as well. Um, they do the trick. Okay, I'm going to take a little scoop of flour uh, for rolling this out. I'm going to uh, bring this over here. I always transport my pie plates and dishes and stuff on a big tray because I find once I have it in there, I can't grab it by the sides anymore. Especially once I have big oven mitts on. I'd rather grab it from underneath. And then it means that if anything does boil over, it gets caught by the pan instead of my oven. 
It might have some kind of small impact on the cooking, but honestly, I don't really care. <sighs> Hasn't ruined my life yet. Um, I'm looking for my oven, for my, my rolling pin. And I hid it from myself because I wasn't using it very often. Here it is. I was like, I'm going to put you to a lower traffic cupboard because you're far too big to live in the high traffic cupboard when I don't use you every day. But I do need to keep it because otherwise I'm just rolling stuff out with wine bottles. And I don't always have wine. Okay. So, there we go. Uh, I would chill my hands, but at this point, eh, it's fine. We are going to roll this out to basically a circle, whack it in there. Uh, the nice thing about lemon meringue pie is that we're not really gonna see this crust all that much in the finished product. Like obviously you want it to have integrity and you would like it to be tasty, but um, the top of the pie, the visual, you know, blockbuster, showstopper nature of the thing is really going to be uh, the meringue on top. So if my pie crust is a little broken or a little crumbly looking, that's just fine. Nobody needs to know. So I'm just trying to like keep it roughly together without getting it too stuck. Uh, and without warming it up too much, which is partly what this is all about. And the reason I'm flipping it is just so I can keep getting the flour underneath it so it doesn't like glue to my counter. I can see little veins of butter flowing through it, which is good. You don't want it to be, you don't, we don't mind having little patches of butter as long as they're not huge. Uh oh. All right, we want to work really quickly because it is warm, capital W warm in here. We want it to be a fairly even thickness, roughly round, and then we can kind of trim and patch on later because why not? All right. I'm going to use my hands. We're going to go lift. Oh, you couldn't see any of that. Oh, well. And <laughs> it's fine. Here's what we're looking at now. So it's not perfectly, um, well, that's a lot of glare. You're never going to be able to see that. Uh, <laughs> it's, not perf it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Um, I'm going to just take a little bits of excess and then use them to patch in some of our less thorough done spots. And then we're going to slap that in the oven for our blind baking. That's just the right amount. I wouldn't want to have done any deeper of a pie dish or it wouldn't really make it all the way up the sides. We want the crust to prevent our lemon filling from cooking onto the glass. It doesn't need to look good, but it does need to form a nice stable barrier. It would be great. All right, how we doing? How we looking? How you feeling? How you doing? Oh, a little bit of extra. Yeah. Go. Any other little scrapperinos that want to? Yeah, perfect, lovely, so cute. Okay, so I don't know about lovely, it doesn't look amazing, but that will do. That is a little, little heat in there. That'll do. So I'm going to throw that back on its tray. Uh, I made a tiny mess in the tray, then I'm just going to shake it here so I don't like burn tiny specks of flour and set off my fire alarm. I had this, which is my little parchment, uh, my little parchment mat, and then this, some pie weights. The parchment just makes it easier to get the pie weights off of it later. Um, and we don't need to use all of them, just kind of mostly. And I'm going to do that for 10 minutes at 400 degrees to blind bake the crust so that it is not overly soggy when we add our liquid filling. All right. Uh, later, we're going to remember to reduce the oven temperature down to 350 because the pie does not bake at that. You want to do meringues at like lower temperatures. Shania Twain, the Shania Twain. Thank you very much for the brand new sub. My big sister is such a big fan. I'm a big fan too, but not no one rivals my sister for Shania Twain fangirling. Uh, are you a fan of scene transitions for your streams? That is something that is kind of on my list of things to learn that I don't know how to do because I think they're really fun and I just haven't really, I haven't really worked that out in OBS yet. Um, I'll do different overlays. I do have slightly fancier overlays um, for my WoW streams. Not super fancy, but like slightly fancier. 
but uh, transitions, not so much, no. Um, I've seen some really cool ones online though. Okay, so I'm gonna put this away. And then basically we're gonna clear a little space and get started on our filling. Izzy, thank you very much for the brand new set. Welcome to the Squirrel Squad. Oh, I've got flour on my iPad. Steve Jobs would uh, not care. <laughs> he would not care one bit about me and my belongings and what I do with them. Okay. Oh. I don't know why that sound effect was necessary. All right. Uh, excited to see you in Holocraft tomorrow. I'm hoping for the best. I'm hoping for the best. I am very paranoid about appearing like undereducated on whatever they're going to talk about because I feel like they're a little bit more spontaneous than some podcasts I've done. So it's not like I have, you know, some people will like have um, like show notes a few days in advance, stuff like that. So I'm just hoping that I know enough about whatever we end up talking about to be able to actually add something to it and not just the pan does that a little bit um, whenever it heats up to a certain amount. Oh, excuse me. Okay. I just want to make sure it didn't like kick my pie weights out of there. No, we're good. Okay. Um, so now it is time to prepare the lemon filling. We're going to whisk the egg yolks in this bowl to set aside. I had a whisk out already. I probably put it away. No, it's over here. Um, also pencil can. There we go. We're going to whisk this and set aside. This is going to become part of my filling. Why, well, thanks for the gift set. Also, uh, Anonymous Cheer had some bits earlier. Thank you. Lord Maximus, uh, if you're still here, I, I missed your sub. Thank you very much for the six month reset. Bit of fun journey. Oh, pie guilt, pie guilt. Oh, I'm experiencing pie guilt. My happy lost lemon meringue pie, I've never made him one. Well, maybe we'll, maybe depending on um, how well this goes, you'll either have a good excuse as to not do it, or maybe, maybe, it'll, maybe it'll look fun. Um, so far, my takeaways have been that there's a lot of steps, but like if you're in the mood for a project, you know, you've got like an afternoon and you want to do something you're going to be really proud of. Nothing that I've done so far has been hard. It's just been like a lot of little things. So this is our, our yolk set aside. We're going to whisk water and lemon juice in with this, which is sugar, cornstarch, and salt. So the water, the lemon juice, and the lemon zest. So I'm going to grab one and a half cups of water. I am probably just gonna measure three half cups of this, probably just for my bread pitcher, I don't know why not, um, into here. And then we're gonna turn this on to medium heat once we have it kind of mixed together. So we measured earlier, this is uh, sugar, cornstarch, and salt. There is a half a cup. Here is one cup, one and a half cups. And then we're gonna add our lemon juice and zest to that as well. And I'm gonna just kind of whisk it together so that it all comes together, uh, or at least hopefully, fingers crossed. So lemon juice and lemon zest. Get the rest of the game in there. And then I'm gonna rinse off this whisk. I'm gonna make sure it comes together. And then we're gonna turn the heat onto medium and continue stirring it pretty often as we bring the temperature up on this, which is basically our lemon filling, except without the egg yolks. So medium, nope, wrong burner, medium. <laughs> I have lived in this apartment for a solid five years and I still turn on the wrong burner sometimes. Oh gosh, come back, come back. So I'm just kind of slowly stirring to make sure, cause we have like a lot of sugar in here and we wanna make sure it all gets kind of incorporated. I feel good about my decision to pre-mix the sugar and the cornstarch because I'm not sensing any major clumps here, which is good. We don't wanna have any like little cornstarch clumpies. Uh, I know that my metal whisk is probably not doing great things for my nonstick pan, but honestly, I've had it for so long. Uh, I don't really care anymore. <laughs> I will replace it one day. I don't have a, uh, actually I do have a plastic whisk. I just don't like it. <laughs> I should probably use that one. Fine, I'll use that one. I can sense the spirit of my, my ancestors <laughs> telling me to not use the metal thing on the nonstick pan. All right, there we go. So we're just gonna kind of do that every once in a while. It looks, it feels like it's all pretty well dissolved now um, until we, we bring that to, hmm, it's going to be thin and cloudy, which it is. And we're going to begin, it'll, it's supposed to begin 
thickening and bubbling after roughly six minutes. So I'm going to set a six minute timer and see what, that, see what I think about that. Um, oh shoot. I never, I either set a 10 minute timer and then forgot about it or I never set a 10 minute timer. One of those two things happened. I'm gonna have to, to YOLO when to take the crust out of the oven. That pie sounds nice and refreshing, especially since it's 100 degrees here. I did set a timer. I'm pretty sure I just canceled it instinctively, going to set a timer for the six minutes, which funnily enough is not nearly as important. So I'm just gonna say, I feel like that was about five minutes ago. So I'm just gonna call that the same. <laughs> I'm just going to take the, the pie crust out. It's not an exact science. I'm probably not going to burn it. Leftover brownies stirred heavily with alcohol, rolled frozen as balls, and then dipped in chocolate. <laughs> that sounds good. Uh, Mom's kitchen's almost identical to yours. Same oven, fridge, microwave. This is a rental property, so I imagine that there's about a bajillion places that look exactly like this. Uh, it's nice enough. I like the appliances. They have not really let me down too much. <sighs> I've always thought about how I would want to set up a kitchen if I had a kitchen that I could like really decorate or renovate myself, like when you're like picking countertops and stuff. This particular design of countertop is great for hiding dirt. Like you can look at the counter and think it's clean, but it's not clean. And I would rather know <laughs> that it's not clean so I can clean it. Cause what I end up doing right now is I'll just like, try to get really low so I'm on counter level so I can see the texture differences of having like crumbs on the counter so I know when to wipe it. Whereas if it was a solid color counter, I could probably just tell, right? Okay, so let's keep this whisking. I can definitely sense it getting warmer. I can probably throw this in the sink. And basically what we're gonna do, once that is bubbling and a bit thickened, we're going to give it another whisk and reduce the heat to low. And that's when we're going to start tempering our egg yolks, which is scary. We're going to very slowly stream a few spoonfuls of the hot lemon stuff into the egg yolks, probably while stirring them, um, because we're trying to not cook them. We don't want to curdle them. We just want to slowly dilute them with the lemon stuff. Once it's kind of diluted, we can then slowly pour everything in that liquid measure into the big pot again while stirring it and then turn the heat back up. We're basically just trying to incorporate the eggs without turning them into scrambled eggs. <laughs> that's the dream. I think I can do it. You just gotta, you just gotta know about the risks, that's all. Um, I cannot post the recipe because I don't own it. I took um, parts of recipes from King Arthur's Flour and from Sally's Baking Edition, Addiction, and I think also from Simple Recipes, something like that. I kind of took bits and pieces from different places and like copied the text into a Google Doc for myself, but because I just like wholesale copy pasted it, um, that has to be for my own use only. Hmm. Egg challenge run starting now. I, I have a good feeling about this. We've made lemon curd before because I remember having a big bowl of lemon curd in my fridge. I was just putting it on ice cream for a while. I must have made lemon tarts or something like that. We've been doing baking streams for enough years now that we've like repeated recipes and I've definitely forgotten about some things that we've made. We must have done some kind of a lemon tart. All right, someday my wife and I are going to remodel our kitchen. We're gonna design it from the ground up for her YouTube cooking vid. That sounds like fun. I am so scared of renovating things. Obviously I can't hear because I rent, but like one day I feel like I'm gonna to wanna to renovate things because I would rather buy a home that is like not a crazy big or expensive or new or nice home, but like sort of make it my own over time, which kind of, as long as you got a home that has like good bones in it, means renovation, but I've also seen <laughs> growing up many, many adults in and around my life starting renovation projects and then just like not finishing them for years. And then I would watch Homes on Homes where this TV personality on HGTV would like go expose work that terrible contractors had done. And there were just like a bunch of contractor horror stories. So I feel like adult, like future me is gonna wanna pay somebody to do things for me. And I just wanna pick out all the pretty stuff, be like these counters and these cabinets and this flooring and then have some, and then pay somebody else to do it properly because I'm not an expert, so I would make a mess of it. But I'm just like, a, I don't even know how one begins to find a trustworthy contractor. Yelp, <laughs> right? Like, I don't know. Um, and this is like such a later me problem because I don't own a home and I'm unlikely to own a home anytime soon. It's just, uh, yeah. All right, 
So let's go give that a whisk and see how we're doing. We're basically waiting to see this mixture start to thicken a little bit, which the cornstarch is going to be our active thickening agent here. So as we raise the heat, it is still fairly thin and cloudy. Um, so I don't think it's going to really make that six minute mark, but that is when I'm going to remove the, the crust from the oven. So we do want this to be done relatively quickly because I'm supposed to add the filling to the crust while it is still fairly warm. So hopefully it doesn't take too long to thicken. <laughs> That used to be the bane of my, like, 12, my teenage cooking life, like, kind of 12 to 17, was I was constantly trying to make, like, roux and white sauces for mac and cheese and stuff like that. And getting the darn thing to thicken was just impossible to young me. She was so frustrated. I have a better time of it now because I use more flour. Um, I'll brown the roux first, and that kind of helps. And also, um... It sounds gross, but if you use like a little bit of like a processed American cheese as a stabilizing agent, that really helps with the texture. But like I spent so long as a young person just waiting for sauces to thicken <laughs> and they were never going to thicken. It was going to be just liquid until the end of days. <sighs> Have your husband do it. Oh, I don't think that would be our thing. I don't, I think that the, 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 the stereotype that men should be handy it can, I mean, there's nothing wrong with handy men and there's nothing saying he can't be handy as a man or a woman, but like the, the belief that he should be just because he's the man, I feel like is a little bit limiting. Um, you know, it, it probably puts some unfair expectations on men that aren't very handy. And uh, I'm just kind of more, I wouldn't say that I'm an expert at stuff, but I'm a little bit more hands-on when it comes to just like messing with the physical stuff. Uh, neither one of us are great at it, but I'm the one that's more likely to try. <laughs> Which is uh, how I've hung some, I've made some big curtain hanging mistakes, but I'm pretty confident that next time I could really do it. Uh, Firestorm, thank you very much for the nine month resub. Thanks for hanging out with me while I can tomatoes fun. What do you use your canned tomatoes for? Is that like a, just for tomato sauce? Or I mean, you have so many options at that point. You could do chili, you could do soups. <sighs> Hiring contractors sounds scary, right? I just, I basically remember that one horror show on TV and then um, there's an episode of, there's an episode of the IT crowd where Jen has hired a builder to do some work in her house and Roy becomes convinced that he's a builder from a nightmare builder show and he thinks, he, he, he gets it into her head that this guy is like peeing in her sinks <laughs> and uh, that's not, that's also not a good reference point for contractor hiring. I'm sure there are plenty of people that run excellent businesses that are, you know, do great work <laughs> that would never do things like that, but like, they don't get all the good press. Mm. Uh, Candy Druid, or Katie Druid, thank you very much for the two month reset, appreciate it. Canned tomatoes for soups. Uh, tomato jelly is good too. Good at fixing stuff in my house. My wife fixes stuff on our automobiles. Uh, is it your first time talking with Asmin tomorrow? So hyped to watch all craft. Yeah, I mean, it's my first time talking to... Usually any time you see me talking to somebody is my first time talking to them because as a general rule, I don't talk to anybody. Uh, which is kind of scary. It's one of my least favorite things about uh, like streamer culture or just creator culture in general is that usually when you get people together for collaboration projects and podcasts and stuff like that, everybody is so busy that that's usually the first time that you chat with people. And it would be really nice to have some kind of a model where it was not so awkward to like spend time with people a little bit ahead of time, just so that it's not like literally the first words you've said to each other. But I understand why with everybody's schedules and whatnot, that's just kind of hard to do, especially if it's something that is only for like a, like a podcast or, you know, not everybody's going to be best friends. <sighs> so uh, it, one of those things that kind of is what it is. Is this thickened yet? It's like warm, it's steamy. It smells good. It smells lemony. I need it to thicken before I start tempering my eggs. Also, I need to take this out. That is definitely blind bake. It doesn't look brown or anything yet, which is good. Um, I don't think I've overcooked it, but it is definitely ready to come out. So let's take this out. That is one blind baked crust. And then we're going to reduce the temperature of the oven down to 350 degrees. And hopefully by the time that pie's going back in, we're down there. Yeah, I know the timer went off a few minutes ago. I get distracted. I feel like baking um, 
in general, a little tough for me because I'm kind of scattered to begin with, but add in streaming and it's a miracle I get anything done. Mm. Yeah, Allcraft is streamed. I believe it's going to be starting 1 p.m. tomorrow. So basically this time tomorrow, except walk it back like three and a half hours-ish, somewhere around there. It's not a Twitch channel. I think they just stream it on Asmongold's channel, I think. Mm. Okay, Space Fork, that, sound, that, that, that all sounds like it makes sense. I just, uh, <laughs> you watch, if you've ever seen the new uh, Queer Eye show, um, more than a makeover, you'll see uh, Bobby Burke just do magical things to people's places in like four days. And obviously he has a team and he's also like a special kind of expert, but it makes you look at that and go, man, where can I buy a Bobby? <laughs> where can I hire somebody? To, to do something like that for my house. <sighs> when can we all come over to try the pie? Uh, I am notoriously bad at sharing. However, I'm going to try the pie tomorrow on my afternoon stream. So I start my afternoon stream, uh, same time slot as this, so 3 to 5 p.m. Pacific time will be my own WoW stream. Um, we'll be doing Hali, actually, I think should be the invasion app. Oh, no, no, tomorrow's Thursday. I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow. You know what I really want to do? This is so boring. Nobody will want to watch this. I am right now on kind of a roll of catching up old reputations to try to get my Pure Heart Courser ahead of Shadowlands. So I'm trying to get to 100 Exalted Reputations. I'm currently sitting at 89. So I've just been kind of running around doing old rep stuff. Um, I finished Consortium this morning. I was doing some Alder Scryer stuff. And I'm making like a rep catch-up video. So I have a work reason to be doing all this. But like... Uh, I'm, I'm super into it right now, so I realize that I don't have Gelkis Clan Centaur or Meg, Meg, Megrum Clan Centaur. And I was reading about how if you did the quest lines back in the day, you can just go talk to Karnum in Karnum's Glade and Desolus, and he'll just give you both reputations. So I, like, restore the character I did them on back in the day, and I went and talked to him, and he had nothing for me. I must not have done a quest line. So now I know there's, like, a big quest line, like a big multi-stage quest line to do out in Desolus, but once you get through the whole thing, it gives you both reputations. So, and I don't think there's any time dating or farming in it. It's just a big long quest line. So I want to do that because, you know, if I'm going to start from the beginning, I may as well hear the story of what we're doing right now with the centaur. And then also it's going to give me two reputations towards my achievement. So I'm into it. Um, I do have Hydraxian. Yeah, I do have Hydraxian. Um, I'm missing some easy ones still. I need to finish Thorium Brotherhood. I need to finish... Uh, lower City, Shattered Sun Offensive, um, a couple of raid reputations actually, so most of what I'm doing is just kind of, oh, <gasps> we're thickened, we did it, we did it, okay, so I'm turning this down to low right now, um, it looks evil, but I just need to mix it, <laughs> I let it, I let it sit for too long and it separated, but it's mixing back together now, so this is nice and thick, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the temperature of this down, we've, we've turned it down to low, and I'm going to refer to my reference material just to double check, but we're going to be tempering our egg soon. Moment of truth, it's almost here. Also, I'm going to get those pie weights back into their little container. So I'm actually going to pull this off the heat for a second because I want it to cool down and it is definitely thickened. Oh, it's nice and evenly thick too. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, it smells yummy. I really hope the meringue turns out well. It's going to be a real shame if I make a really nice lemon curd and like a pretty nice pie crust and then the meringue is just a tragedy. Uh, okay. Ah! These are uh, ceramic pie weights and I'm never getting that one back. Uh, let's just kind of pick these out here. So the bottom of the crust is mostly done. Ooh, hot, 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 hot. Okay. Give that a little whisk, let it come down to temperature, and then we're going to start, whisk, start uh, tempering our eggs. Uh, Nathnor, thank you very much for the brand new sub. Welcome to the Squirrel Squad. And uh, Aerith, thank you very much for the bits. Appreciate it. <sighs> uh, when you went live, Asmund told everyone to support your stream. What, today? <laughs> today? Oh, that's funny, just because this has nothing to do with WoW. I'm literally just uh, murdering lemons in my kitchen, but that's very nice of him. Mm. Most of my TBC reps in Time Walking Week. Yeah, I'm saving my time warped badge strategy for reputations that I feel like I really don't want to do any other way. Uh, Shao Hao, I am like two thirds of the way done Emperor Shao Hao, and I feel like that's when I'm really just going to funnel time warped badges in to finish next time uh, Panda Week comes around, which I think I just missed actually. Mm. 
ceramic pie weights, never heard of them. They're entirely unnecessary. Um, they're basically just like these little ceramic reusable balls in case you're like bored of using your beans or rice or whatever you usually use. But just for when you're blind baking crust. Um, I don't regret purchasing them actually. People told me it was silly and they're probably right, but like it takes basically as much space as keeping some extra beans or rice on hand. And you know, I only had to buy them once. How many exalted reps are you at? 89, I'm currently at 89. Oh, is Keepers of Time bad? I thought, I thought that would be an easy like dungeon one. I thought I could just go do like Stratholm or something or like Culling of Stratholm. <laughs> Why is she making five? Yeah, if this is your first time at my stream, I do stream WoW most days out of a month. I do one cooking stream and every other day is a WoW stream. <laughs> you just, we just, we just, you just picked pie day. Which, uh, I mean, some people would say is a lucky day. I wish I could, I wish I could get a good angle on this. It's like really lovely and like, it's got like a nice thickness to it, a lovely viscosity. Okay, so I bet you that is kind of cooled down now. So I'm gonna, I want my little whisk back. Basically, we got egg yolks, yeah? I'm gonna take a spoonful and then whisk in one spoonful at a time. Actually, I'm gonna read my reference material one more time. <sighs> Very slowly stream a few large spoonfuls of warm lemon mixture into the beaten egg yolks. And then, also in a slow stream, whisk the egg yolk mixture back. So we're gonna do three big spoons. Big spoon. Scoop. And I'm gonna be whisking this the whole time. And this might be a little messy, but that's fine. So we're gonna be whisking and very slowly pour it in while whisking with the other hand, which is not my dominant hand, but it's too late to switch. And then that's the first spoon. So let's get this the rest of the way in. I'm gonna try this with my left hand now. I am right-handed, which I used to feel almost a little petulantly upset about when I was a kid, because I thought lefties were like so trendy. I thought they were so cool and creative and like different. And I'm like, man, I don't want to be different. But now I now realize that like I live in a world where mice and scissors and <laughs> keyboards are all made for me and I should really not complain. There's two. So far so good. I don't see any scrambled eggs. Let's go for a third one. I might even do four. I don't think there's any harm in like adding more of this. You just want to, especially because a lot of it is clinging to the spoon because of how thick it is. One more. Oh, this smells so good. Okay. I'm scared of the meringue. This is going too well. There is disaster in my future. I can smell it. All right. Yeah, sure, why not? A little bit more. I feel like the two-handed motion really helps. Although it kind of hurts too. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, that's so good. That's really good. It's like just the right amount of tart. Oh, worth it just for that. Uh, Gabble Dabbler, thank you very much for these seven months of reset. Just got here live, just finished Lore Master, and now I seem to be lost in what to do. Have you got a hundred exhausted reputations? <laughs> That's what I'm on. Okay, so now I'm going to be very slowly um, stirring this egg lemon mixture into the rest of the lemon mixture while whisking with this hand. So we're gonna do a real slow pour and make sure that we're mixing so that we don't get any we don't want any clumps. We don't want any cooked little egg bits. So far, so good. A little more. This is more of a workout than I bargained for. This is really thick. It's actually got some resistance to it. Those push-ups are, well, I mean, I can't tell if they're paying off. They're not hurting. So far, so good. This is really the, um, these egg yolks are quite orange because these are my favorite eggs that are actually like properly free range. And it's making the color, funnily enough, the lemons don't actually add a lot of color, but the egg yolk is really bringing the color up to that yellow that you expect. All right. So after this, we're gonna raise the heat again on the curd. We're gonna bring it back up to a boil. We're gonna boil it for about six to eight minutes. And, and while that's happening, I'm gonna start the meringue. All right. There you go. I'm really glad I decided ah, to do this in that pot because I think the big one would have been too 
would have been too, uh, oh, get that spill there, would have been too small. Okay, so that's going to bring back to, we're going to bring that back to a boil now that it's all incorporated and I successfully did not scramble my eggs. Whoa. Uh, turn back up to medium, which I did cook until it's thick and big bubbles begin, big bubbles begin bursting. <laughs> I didn't expect tongue twisters in my recipe until big bubbles begin bursting at the surface. And then we're going to remove the pan from heat and whisk in butter. I need to not forget that. I have some butter. We're going to mix that in. <sighs> but we need to get started on our meringue. So we have five egg whites already in our stand mixer, which I'm pointing to, but you cannot see it this time. Okay, I'm going to need a big whisk. I have one somewhere. I should have found it ahead of time. I actually don't know where it is. I see my dough hook. I see my mixing paddle. I'm looking for my whisk attachment, which knowing me, I hid it somewhere dumb because I do that whenever things are in my way and I don't use them very often. I hide them somewhere dumb and then I don't remember <laughs> what I've done with them. Uh, it's not back there. That's just a bunch of boxed cake mixes. There it is. I like, at the beginning of the pandemic, I stocked up on boxed cake, boxed cake mix because there wasn't any flour and I'm like, jokes on them. What if all I want to make is cake? And I forgot I don't like cake. <laughs> it's only okay. All right. Beat the egg whites and cream of tartar. So I'm basically just going to start beating the egg whites. Uh, cream of tartar. Nope, not that. That's turmeric. That would be weird. Uh, cream of tartar. <laughs> I'm not making a curry meringue, at least not today. So a half a teaspoon of this. Where's my spoons? Where are my spoons? And we want to move fairly quickly. Also, we want to keep stirring this. I don't know why we're bringing this back to a boil. It's already like plenty thick. But just in case, you know, if the recipe calls for it, who am I to say no? Anima, 1992, thank you very much for the, for the brand new sub. Welcome to the Squirrel Squad. Also, Amethorian with the brand new sub. Welcome. One teaspoon, what did it say, half a teaspoon? Yeah, half a teaspoon cream of tartar, which is a stabilizing agent. I have no idea what it actually is or comes from. Oh, it's a pure natural ingredient that is created as grape juice turns to wine. Interesting, now I know. Sometimes the answers are right in front of you. Okay. All right, so half a teaspoon of this, and I'm gonna start this whisking. This next section is gonna be loud because we're gonna be doing that for a while. At least I have a machine. Medium speed. We're gonna need another half a cup of sugar at some point, so I should get my half cup clean. Here it is, make sure that's dry. So we're making a meringue. Oh, oh, we have our big bubbles. We have our big bubbles. So I'm going to keep going with the meringue and then we're going to put the filling into the crust and then we're going to get the meringue on top of the filling and then it'll be ready for the oven. Uh, this is foamy. Increase to high speed. I think it's a little, um, I think it's scraping the bowl a little bit, but it seems fine. Until soft peaks form about four minutes. Set the timer for three and see how we're looking. And then we're gonna want sugar, but also some salt. So I'm just gonna grab my half cup of sugar and we're gonna set that down right here. I don't know if you can hear me, <laughs> it's loud. That is pretty foamy looking already. I always thought if I had a stand mixer, I would bake and cook more. It's pretty nice, I can't lie to you. I probably don't use it as much as I should, given how nice it is. But like best, uh, that was a Christmas present for my husband like five years ago, and he, he really nailed it. Electric hand mixers are also fine. This is just very nice because you don't you can be doing other stuff. Alright, I'm gonna put this in here.
I'm gonna resist the urge to scrape it even more because it's already pretty full. That's that's the, the rest of it. I'm gonna check the peaks. They said soft peaks. So yeah, we're definitely not a soft peaks yet. We're still pretty liquid. It just looks so foamy. I'm gonna chat over here. Don't mind me. This is just really good. share this with the world. Hang on. Oh, this mouse sucks a lot. There we go. Uh, it's so fluffy. So I would call that a soft peak. It is definitely holding its form. Uh, oh yeah, you're right, the butter. <laughs> I knew I was going to forget something. So what I'm about to do is I'm going to slice this into like a bunch of pieces and I'm going to distribute them and then I'm going to do a real gentle stir because I've already put the mi I've already put the filling in, right? So we want to not we want to not disturb the crust, but we do want to melt that butter in there. Um, it's probably fine if I don't uh, use all the butter, or if I had forgotten the butter because the filling already tastes pretty good, and I don't think this is going to like have it thicken or anything. I think I'm literally just adding calories to an already fairly calorific pie, but like, you know. Something had to go wrong. I'm gonna let that melt for a little bit and then I'm gonna very carefully and gently stir the filling while it's in the crust to see if I can incorporate that better. And if not, then I will have done something very strange. Okay, so we're going to add sugar and salt and then beat on high speed for another two minutes until glossy stiff peaks form. So there's our sugar and salt. And uh, we need to lift the bowl, helpful. get it all mixed in there. Fun. Okay. If only I'd remembered to do this earlier. It's melting just fine. Give me another sec. I just don't want butter pockets in the pie because I'm kind of known for accidentally having butter pockets and stuff. It's a mistake that I make a lot. So the pie might stick to its dish a little tiny bit, but I think at least the butter is incorporated now. It's a fairly even color and the chunks are gone. There's a little tiny bit where the crust wasn't high enough, but what do you do? All right, those are pretty glossy. They look um, fake, actually. All right, that is stiff. <coughs> excuse me, I'm dying. Oh, excuse me. I don't have a mute key handy. Usually I can mute myself. <coughs> dying. All right, um, they're stiff, they're shiny. I don't see any reason why we can't go ahead with that. So now what it wants me to do 
is spread that on top of the filling. Make sure you spread it all the way to the edges so it touches the crust. And then we're just gonna bake it. Okay, so let's get this out of here. And then I'm gonna switch my view back. And then I'm gonna get the rest of this meringue maybe off of this thing. Or maybe I, maybe I won't. <laughs> maybe it lives here. Yeah, we have enough. We have a we have a fair amount of meringue going on here. Okay. So here's here's what we're working with. So I want to spread this, and I'm very worried because it's kind of stiff. I don't want to like push my pie around too much. So I'm basically going to dollop bits on in different quadrants to kind of make spreading easier, and then I'm going to go at it with a knife. I think. Also, this is a lot of meringue, and the internet told me just to use all of it. So maybe I can just. <laughs> This is a lot. This means so much. It's for nine inches. I mean, I know people talk about sky high meringue. Is this not going to be a problem? <laughs> I'm building a tower to Thunder Bluff over here. Uh, 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 <laughs> that's like, we've got solidly seven inches of meringue, at least at the highest point. Let's get you to the edges, shall we? And then I'll see about some extra height. I just want to make sure that we're getting all the way up to, this, to the edge. I'm not going to worry too much about making it pretty on top because the harder I try, the worse it's going to get. So I just need to accept my first version as good enough. It's hard because it's got a really weird consistency. I never work with meringue. This stuff is like slime went viral on the internet because it was fun to work with. Those kids should bake. So now, um, I have more, so I'm just going to add it. I don't have much more, actually. That was most of it. We're looking pretty good. So, we just want to, like, woof. I want woofs. Wow. Fun. It's so pillowy. It looks, it, like, the, the gloss on it is weird. I didn't expect it to get shiny. I know it said it was gonna. Well, now I do want it to be pretty. No, that's not going to do anything good. I just need to stop is what I need to do. I need to stop. Uh, are we all the way to the edges at least? We've got full pie sealage. Wow. All right. Look at that. I won't tilt it too much because I will dump it in the sink. That's going in. And I'm going to set a timer this time. <laughs> So this is 350 degrees, uh, 25 to 30 minutes. So I'll take a look after 25. I'm assuming I just don't want to brown the, um, I don't want to brown the uh, meringue until the meringue is browned on top, yeah. Because the filling is already kind of baked and that will mostly set once it's cooled. And because the, um, the crust is already mostly baked. So we're really just kind of trying to cook the meringue on top, right? Mm. It's gonna look so good once the peaks burn. I'm actually really excited about that. That went kind of well, right? Also, is this any good? Can I just eat this? Oh yeah, that's like candy. That's like really fluffy. Weird, weird flavor. Kind of reminds me of marshmallows actually. Um, and I don't know if I like marshmallows. I think I like meringue. Once it's got like that crust on it, once it's kind of like crispy on the outside, I think that'll be fun. All right. Ah, where'd my tea go? Did I finish my cup of tea? I did finish my cup of tea. This was one teacup's worth of pie making. How do the peaks get brown? It should happen naturally in the oven. Um, I've seen people on the British Bake Off like go in with a blowtorch to make it more dramatic, but in my experience, it should brown just fine in the oven. Mom, thanks, pain music. That's very nice of you. I'm still waiting for something to go horribly wrong. I think it's going to be a little stuck to the pan because definitely the crust didn't come quite far enough up the sides. But the nice thing about this one, actually, is usually with pies, you have to mess with the whole, oh, use a pie shield or, like, make a weird semicircle thing out of foil to prevent the edges from browning too much. Like, you put the shield on halfway through, and I have pie shields now. But this one, I don't need to worry about it because the meringue is the pie shield. <laughs> uh, I think so far, assuming that the pie turns out well, which it should, <laughs> you know, like, hopefully nothing else can go wrong at this point as long as I don't drop it. Um, I don't know where I got this from. 
as long as I don't drop it, it should be fine. I would say the hardest part about this was just that there was a lot of different steps going on and trying to make sure I did everything. I, only, I, I forgot to melt the butter in it at first, but we got, we figured it out, probably. Um, I think it was just a lot of discrete steps, but that's one of those things that like all cooking involves a lot of discrete steps. It's just that when you're used to making something, because you make it all the time, you do stuff like subconsciously. Um, so I think if you made it more often, you would get pretty used to it. This would be a fun one to do if you had like kids to help or like I'm anybody to help, I guess, that you and you were good at having help in the kitchen. I'm terrible. I am an I am a dictator. I am an autocrat. I'm a monarch. I am uh, mean. I don't share kitchen space very well because I have very specific ideas in my head of how I want things to happen and I'm terrible at communicating them. But like if you could learn to delegate and you have like somebody else zest a lemon or separate some eggs or juice a lemon or for example, um, I feel like you could probably get the whole thing together a lot faster because that took me solely two hours just to get the thing in the oven. But that did include making some pastry dough. Oh, not so bad. I forgot how good lemon curd is. Goodness gracious, that's really delicious. You gotta use fresh lemons and you gotta just try it sometime. Like for some tarts or you could just have that on ice cream. It actually was not that hard to temper the eggs. You just gotta kind of have patience with it and use both hands, I think. <sighs> My cloth fell off the oven. Oh, I've got, I've got one in my hands. I've got the other one over here. I've never been one to do the baking, like the, the over the shoulder towel. I feel like it would probably be handy to have something right here just to dab your hands with, but I feel like I would just drop it all the time. <sighs> uh, beautiful share that kitchen space. Mm, I think I got that from uh, like my mom or my sister or something. We're not very good at, I feel like I would rather just do it all myself and then, and then and then if it's if it's something happened, it's my fault, right? Okay. Also, when you're doing something all yourself, nobody judges you for doing something like a little oddly or like your way. You can just kind of if you if you have an idea and you want to try something, you can just kind of go for it. Uh, oven time is 20 minutes and 54 seconds, and that's on the pie baking. So usually, once I have something in the oven, I will like end stream, and because we can't eat it for hours. Um, it's going to have to cool for like half an hour and then it's going to have to chill in the fridge for another four hours. So I can have some tonight at like nine or ten, but I can't have any now. But um, I kind of am of a mind to just like linger and hang out and chat so that you guys can see it come out because I bet it's going to look nice once it's all like brown and stuff on top. That sounds nice. And in the meantime, I can just kind of clean up my kitchen and then I don't have any dishes to do after the fact. <sighs> That'll be kind of good. This guy goes over here. These will go over here. And we can just kind of talk about how we feel about WoW right now, because there's all kinds of stuff happening at WoW right now, right? Uh, I was just forming, damn cloth for this, this is messy. I was just forming my first impressions of the PVP trinket change. So if you missed it, they posted a blue post today saying that in Shadowlands, the PvP talent row that offers you a choice between Relentless Adaptation or the Gladiator's Medallion, that's just gone. And instead, if you want to have the Gladiator's Medallion effect, you're going to have to actually get the trinket again. And I'm kind of into that because that means that at most, the world will require me to get one raid trinket instead of two. It's a trinket slot that effectively I know I'm going to have for PvP gear. And all I want from my life in Shadowlands is to be able to play Arena without having to raid or do Mythic Plus on that character. I don't like mixing and matching. So that's kind of good news, I think, on that, on that side of things. Um, I am married, yeah. I am, as we say, super married. <laughs> I'm the most married dude. Way married. I watched a hairstyles video, now I'm really excited to visit the barbershop. Yo, druids are going to have such a ball. Like, not only being able to change your own character's hair, especially like a night elf druid, night elf options are incredible, but also, um, but also all of your animal forms separately. I bet you there's some that people just like forgot about. You know, when was the last time you looked through the available glyphs? Being able to preview the different travel forms and swim forms and flight forms and whatnot at the barbershop, I think, is going to kind of reinvigorate at least the enjoyment of my druid. Uh, what about Human Trinket? So Human Trinket hasn't been PvP Trinket for a long time. It is a stun, it's a get out of stun free button that puts your PvP Trinket on a 30 second cooldown. 
Um, so it's not exactly two trinkets, because it's not going to do anything about like your disorients or your blinds or your fears or your cyclones. Um, it's just for sense. Can I get those purple gloves? You like my dish gloves? I just got these off Amazon. I'm reserving judgment on them until I have had more time with them to determine how quickly they get holes, because usually that's what happens to me, is my dish gloves will just like get little tears at the fingertips or on the fingers, because I wring out my dishcloths really aggressively because I want it to be like not wet, you know? <laughs> you want to rinse it out and then wring it so that it's not super wet. Uh, can we get an email for two for married? Oh man. Uh, here you going on all craft at some point? Yeah, I think that is uh, tomorrow. I need to transfer my current druid to horde for guild. I'm probably gonna make a new one. Hopefully all the new options are available. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can recustomize with your new options. You can, you can change any of them at a barbershop. You don't have to start a new character, but I understand the desire to start a new character. I was thinking about different alts that I wanted to start back when I got that whole pair off the ground. And um, we were looking into starting like a Worgen or a, or a Panda, but they're getting new options. And I knew that I could start one now and then adjust the options later, but I don't wanna. I wanna start a new character with the new options from the beginning. Cause I feel like, especially with an alt that you're not that bonded to yet, having some kind of a, intent behind the, the options that you're using and the transmog you're wearing early really helps me get excited about a new alt. So I, I decided to wait. Chat told me to wait and I'm like, yeah, you're right. You got a good, you got a good point there. <sighs> nice apron. Why, thank you. I am glad I got this one when I did. Oh, speaking of stuff to get while, I, while you can, um, I'm not being paid to advertise this, but there's on Blizzard gear right now, they have some event stuff. They have some exclusive stuff for San Diego Comic-Con, like the digital, the online San Diego Comic-Con. So they have some limited time WoW merch. There's a matted print available in three different sizes that's called like Midsummer Fire Festival that's got like a baby rag and a cinder kitten playing that was kind of cute. I decided not to get it, but I thought about it. And then they have some shirts, including one Jinx shirt that's like a Sky shattering, and I don't know, I, Jinx might continue to sell those later, but Blizzard Gear probably won't. And they have free shipping, so I swallowed my distaste for the Fanatics website and decided to get that one, like the sky breaking sort of cinematic print shirt because it looked kind of cool. And because I don't have enough shirts apparently. <laughs> I absolutely have too many shirts, but I have a few that could, be, that could stand to be retired. Um, I haven't always taken terribly good care of my screen print shirts. I know you're supposed to like put them out inside out before you wash them and put them in the dryer. And I've been kind of lazy about that. So I have a few screen print shirts that could probably stand to be donated or like relegated to some other purpose. Okay, is that looking pretty good? Uh, there we go. <sighs> is that Shadowlands shirt there? So not the logo one and not the one with the Covenant logos. It's a different one. Uh, Morgan being able to change good boy form separate from the human form is wonderful. I am really excited. I mean, that's a really good one. And then Druid colors differently because I have always made my Druid hair color decision based on my Druid hair color, but it's never been my favorite color of bear. I always go with green hair and it gives me like a, a oddly green purple bear that's never been the bear that I wanted to be. And I wanted to be the black bear, <laughs> but I didn't want to wear the black hair. And now I can have a black, I can be a black bear without having a black hair. It's gonna be great. It also finally answered my question. I was like, there's a, there's a swim glyph of the dolphin and there's also a swim glyph of the tide skipper, which as far as I know is also a dolphin. And I'm like, what's the difference? And I was looking at them on Shadowlands beta and I'm like, oh, they are both dolphins. One of them has different colors. That's it. There's the same model with different colors, which made me feel better because then I was like, is there something called a tide skipper? that I just don't know about. Is there an animal? And I'm just gonna be like, I don't know what that is. I don't wanna feel dumb. All right, we're doing pretty good here. I have, I need to wipe off the top of my stove. Um, I can need to rinse out that milk carton to recycle. I always saw the blackish bear druid color as a skunk. Mud skippers exist. So what's a mud skipper then? Because when you say mud skipper, I just think mud kip, which is the Pokemon. 
Is there an animal version of a mudkip? Is that what a mudskipper is? Gosh, if we start talking about aquatic animals, I'm going to go I'm going to go off about fish because I'm just so in the fish space right now. If I had a place where I could have as many tanks as I want, you bet your bottom dollar I would be. Ooh, I want I just want to try different things. I want like really planted tanks and I want some less planted tanks and I want um, I want to try different lighting setups and I want to try different types of fish and I want to do like invert tanks and shrimp and goldfish. <laughs> I really want goldfish. I know it's nice to, I know that um, you should never be too fixated on your goals in life because when you achieve them, they'll never live up to your dreams. But I once really badly wanted a cat. I loved cats so much. I had the worst cat fever. And then for my 21st birthday, my husband got me a kitten and she's the best thing that ever happened to me. So what if goldfish, I mean, I'm not gonna love my goldfish as much as I love my cat because my cat is like my bestie, but like, oh, they're so cute and weird. <laughs> I want them and I can't have them yet. I will one day. They're waiting for me. Actually, my future goldfish probably are not born yet. Ugh. I've always assumed that mudkips were based on axolotls. Oh, that is a good point, actually. <laughs> now, that, now that you mention it, that is basically what that is. All right, not so bad. This can go away. Uh, this goes over here. This one goes over here. Wow, I usually don't get my kitchen this clean <laughs> during a baking stream. Usually there's like an extra 90 minutes or so of like half-heartedly cleaning the kitchen while also trying to tear down all my equipment. And we did a pretty good job here. So we got another 10 minutes. I might have another cup of tea. It's five o'clock, but you know what? It's, uh, Actually, I think I'm doing Mythic Dungeons tonight, so I probably need to stay awake. <laughs> if I'm going to get any keys done. Is it a good week for keys? I don't remember. It's Sanguine, right? Sanguine fortified, something like that. <sighs> yeah, cat won't eat the goldfish. Cat doesn't know anything about the fish. And, and I don't keep fish in tanks without lids. All my aquariums have full covered lids because fish jump, so we'll be fine. Would you like to have a piranha? <laughs> um, I, they're actually kind of cute. Um, Cherisids, is that what they're called? There's like a family of fish. They're actually not that, that unrelated from tetras. They're kind of cute. They got like fun little jaws, but um, I don't feel a strong need to have them. They're also not as dangerous as people make them out to be, as long as you're not doing anything super dumb. Um, they're not terribly dangerous. If I was gonna keep like an exotic kind of like big project fish, I don't think I would ever keep it but um, I don't think I would ever keep them. But if I just went off the rails in my life somehow, arowana are really cool. I don't think I want to keep them of my own. I think I want to visit other people that have arowana. They're big, big, they can get big and they can be scary. Like in the wild, they can hunt birds. They can hunt small monkeys. They're intense. So they need like a lot of food. They need really good food. And the thing that I think puts me off them is the um, YouTuber that I was watching at the time that had some, he had some marijuana that he like really, he had one that he was really attached to and it died just because it tried to jump out of its tank. And it didn't jump out of its tank, but it bonked its head so hard that it just like <laughs> died. I feel like they're probably not meant to be kept inside really. <sighs> uh, Pacus are silver dollars. Pacus are super cute. That's like a really, uh, a really stereotypical fish that people buy without understanding how big it's gonna get. Cause they're like real cute when they're small and then they like, get big. I don't think I would really want a monster fish tank. I think I like medium to small fish. I feel like goldfish is probably as big as I would go. Um, I didn't catch the air one in Animal Crossing. I put Animal Crossing down before they came around. Um, if I ever go back to it, I think I, sh I, think I should. Uh, uh, your mother knit socks in hell. Thank you for the bits. I thought you had fish fins, but then the dish gloves came in shot. What's this aquatic specimen? <laughs> no, those are just my dish gloves. Uh, <laughs> Hazel the fish. There's a new pet. You should for sure get the Arden Welt squirrel. People keep, I, you're not the first person to tell me about that. Is it really good? I'll have to, I'll have to do a video at some point. When are you going back to purple hair? I'm having my hair done next week. I just don't know exactly what color I want yet. I have like three different concepts I'm going to bring in with me and I'm just going to ask Britt what she thinks and then we might do none of them. <laughs> it's, it's hard to say. Um, probably not purple again though, just because I had purple for like a full year and I want something a little different. I haven't seen the new data mine stuff yet. They just had a new build today. How's cooking going? So laser control It's going pretty good in another eight minutes. It's gonna be roughly time. Yeah, we're gonna be able to take this pie out, I think. 
because it's already looking pretty evenly brown. I think we just want like a slightly richer color on some of the peaks there. I'm just gonna follow my heart and turn it down a little more because it's already looking pretty brown, but I don't wanna take it out eight minutes early. So I turned it down to 325 because typically with a meringue, that's kind of what you wanna do is do it low temps, long time. Green is super fun. So I had green hair. I got it done last November, right before BlizzCon because I thought it would be fun and different and it was, and it, I liked it a lot, but the problem was in that like three month span that I had green hair, I never worked with green screens, but within that three month span, there were two separate individual projects that needed to have me green screened. And it was murder <laughs> on both of the sets of people I was working with trying to green screen my hair. One, one of them was Tally. Um, they had a weekly reset segment <laughs> and I was, and Tally's like, yo, you got a green screen? And I'm like, yeah, but I don't know if you want it. <laughs> because I had like matching like green screen colored hair at the time. I didn't have a blue screen available. Um, it, it, you, can, you can make it work if you have the other screens. I just didn't have one. Yeah, so I've said I'm not doing green green again just in case. I never work with green screen, but the second I go green again, it's going to happen. So um, probably not, probably not like, like green green. Do you ever think they're going to make sea lions tameable as a hunter? Like the, like the sea lions. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Maybe? Wouldn't they look kind of goofy just like lumping along? Just wear a crazy hat. Rainbow would be fun, a lion's blue. I just, I have blue hair now, I just had blue hair this last time. I'm thinking maybe like a teal, or maybe like a pink, or maybe, maybe like an eggplant, which is kind of purple, but you could do like a really warm one. I miss, um, I miss hair. I've always kind of wanted to do sort of like a corally salmony pink, like my gnome color, like that, that one color that my gnome's hair is. I've always kind of wanted to do that. I don't know if it would look any good on me. And then covenant matching hair would be cool too. Like if I was going Venthyr, I could do like a red and black thing. I just, um, red hair is kind of anything. <laughs> I don't really want to step on her toes. I don't think she would mind, but uh, you know, uh, do a horde red. That's the other thing is red is a very horde color and I am for the Alliance. <laughs> Pastel rainbows. The problem with pastels is that you have to lighten your hair quite a bit for them to look right. And I prefer to only have us take it like medium light to kind of help help the condition of my hair a little bit. Color the water flask. Oh, like the, I mean, this is a gradient. This is like a, like a dark purple through to a, kind of a red, but that is kind of a nice color. <sighs> the light pink is nice. Half red, half black e girl hair. I feel like I have seen that somewhere, yeah. Yeah, maybe I'll, maybe I'll bring in the teal and the pink and then she'll just kind of ombre them together somehow. We'll see. We'll see. Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to having it done because right now there's like barely any blue left in my bangs and I feel like it makes them look messy even when I've like actually combed them and straightened them recently. So we got five more minutes on this one. We got five more minutes. Am I going to have more tea? I don't know if I should. <laughs> I don't know if I need it to be honest with you. We broke a mug recently. It was not a one of a kind mug. It was a mug that I had a pair of. But I was a tiny little bit sad because, um, also I'm probably gonna microwave this. Don't judge me. Yeah, that needs a little bit of extra heat. Uh, don't worry, I'm not gonna lose my timer. The 30 second button doesn't clear it on this microwave. I was saying something. I finished talking about my hair. I don't know, lost it. Uh, teapot lid didn't fall off. It's got like this little rubber, I need to clean this, but it's got like a little rubber gasket thing that helps it like kind of seal so that it doesn't come out so you don't have to like hold it on. I love these teapots. They also come with these, um, not sponsored, but if they offered me money, I would 100% take it because I love these things. Um, this big, big, big steeper basket that fits perfectly in it, but it also fits in like any mug that I have. And this is nice because it allows for enough space for the leaves to unfurl so that your tea, um, especially if you're using a tea that has like a nice, um, like a nice big sort of leaf to it. I don't know if you're, that's ever gonna focus. Yeah, if you get a tea that has like a nice big leaf, oh, I just threw some on my counter, that, um, <laughs> that needs some space to unfold, it's gonna taste much nicer when steeped in a nice big thing like that. They're called, uh, For Life is the brand of it. Um, they also make mugs that I get for people for gifts because they're like the right size. They've got a little cap on it. I also take one traveling with me, but uh, I like those a lot. My mother-in-law got me that one for a uh, holiday one year and it's excellent. What are you going to do tomorrow on stream? I don't know yet. It might be full para leveling. It might be, I might make you guys watch me grind rep 
like doing shadow labs runs and stuff to kind of catch up some of my rep because that's just kind of what I'm feeling. Uh, <laughs> tea leaf abuse. Did you try a Japanese tea set? I have a Chinese tea set. I have like a Chinese gong fu style set up with like the board and the tiny teapot and the, the little, I've got like a little guy one and like the little tasting cups and stuff. Um, I, I've never tried a Japanese tea set. I need milk for that. And also I've got flour all over. There we go. How many channel points for a highlighted message? What's up, Mart? No, I haven't got midnight yet, but I am going to do that again on Tuesday. Uh, Tuesdays are for instance mat runs. It is tradition. <sighs> Love to see your rep stream. <laughs> I'm having a little bit too much fun uh, recording footage for the rep catch up video. I was doing, um, I actually, I made a big boo-boo. I was farming marks of, actually I made a few boo-boos because I'm trying to catch up my old or rep because I am a silly baby and I never finished Aldor. I just kind of never engaged with it. I started playing in Wrath, so I didn't play it at the time. And I now never got around to going back and doing them. So I'm kind of out of the loop about what's involved. And it turns out what's involved is a lot of turn-ins. There's Marks of Sargeras, there's Marks of Kill Jaden, because I decided to do Aldor, not Scryers. And uh, so I, I Google that and I'm like, cool, turn-ins. I can buy these things in the auction house. So I buy like 500 Marks of Kill Jaden. And then I very quickly discover those only work up until Revered, and I was like two turn-ins away from Revered. So then I had to sell them again. And I'm like, okay, fine, Marks of Sargeras. So I buy all the available Marks of Sargeras, turn them in, buy all the available fell arm armaments, turn them in, and I still need like a lot more reps. So I go farming Marks of Sargeras. Uh, Shadow Labs is kind of my spot right now because it's also giving me lower city rep, which I also need. So I've been doing normal mode Shadow Labs runs because those are the ones that drop the Marks of Sargeras. And I got to the end of the run and I'm like vendoring my gear and I realized I forgot to take the Marks of Sargeras off of my auto vendor list. I had manually added them to the junk list of my auto vendor because up until this point I had no idea what they were for. I didn't really care and I just wanted them out of my bag. So I'd been auto vendoring them and I auto vendored them. I, I had vendored so much stuff that I couldn't get them back. So I accidentally vendored like 63 extra Marks of Sargeras that I needed. They're pretty easy to farm. So it's not that heartbreaking of a loss. But I was I felt so dumb. I'm like, oh, I'm glad I didn't do that on stream. I'm still going to tell them about it, but at least they don't have to witness it firsthand because I feel like it's a funnier story when you didn't like feel the pain in the moment, <laughs> right? <sighs> How do you keep your stove top so clean? I have the same one. So I used to have all kinds of weird buildup and stains because like water would spill and it would like burn on the top of it. And one day I was like, enough, this was last year. I lost my mind, I lost my mind, and I got all kinds of different cleaning stuff. And I tried different glass stovetop cleaners. I tried different, so I got this stuff. This is Barkeeper's Friend. Um, I have a couple of different versions of their cleaners and it does a pretty good job. I would like po pull the wet cleaners and I would like let things soak and stand. And then I would scrub and I would scrape and it got it like most of the way clean, but some parts of it just would not come off. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Pie time. And then I'll, I'll, I'll reveal my not that exciting secret. Okay. I'm not going to carry it over because I don't want to drop it. But wow, look at that. It's so tall. Look at that. It's uh, it's got like a pretty here. being careful. It's got like a pretty good color. Maybe I'll take some photos because the glare is going to kill it. Actually, I need to put that on a rock anyways. Um, it's got some pretty good color. It's got all its height. Uh, nothing weird has happened to it. I heard it could weep and I don't know what that means, but I don't think it happened. <laughs> Maybe it'll weep later. Oh, there we go. We did it. Right? <laughs> Uh, make your own carrot. Thank you very much for the 14 month resub. I think that's our first 14 months. It's so fluffy. That is picturesque. Cassie approves too. I'm so proud. I'm going to slice that tonight. I'll take some pictures when I slice it and then I'll show you guys tomorrow on my afternoon stream after all craft. Um, remind me and I'll get a slice of it. I'll have some on stream. So the final answer behind the uh, stovetop cleaning thing is for glass stovetops like this. 
you get like a razor scraper thing and you buy extra blades to go in it. But essentially you can, you hold it at an angle and you, uh, you know, gird your loins, be brave. You're not going to scratch it as long as you're going, as long as you're not like trying to scratch it. And you can scrape off that buildup that won't come off any other way with a razor. Um, they're, they make these things, they sell them on Amazon. I got mine on Amazon. Um, they specifically, they have like safeties, which I probably should have had on, um, so that you can store it in a cupboard or something like that. But um, that's basically what you do. <sighs> I am doing all craft tomorrow. I hope it goes well. <laughs> if I can survive and, and not horribly embarrass myself, then, then we're, we're doing fine. It just means that it can drip. Okay. Some drops of clear looking liquid. So that's going to happen like in the fridge, right? <sighs> Doesn't affect the taste. Okay. Uh, all craft starts 1 p.m. I believe. 1 p.m. Pacific tomorrow. I am hopped up on tea. I should probably put this down for now. <laughs> uh, that is our stream. I would like to thank you so much for joining me today. That was really fun. I will, like I said, try some tomorrow. I guess I should tweet some pictures. I really hate using Twitter, but I should probably, I can, I can probably tweet some pictures or put them on Instagram or something. Uh, thanks for coming. I'll be back tomorrow, 3 p.m. in the afternoon with my normal stream. We'll do something, but I'll be on a little earlier than that on Asmongold stream. So I'm sure you know where to find that. <laughs> if you're looking for it, I imagine it'll be around. Uh, thank you all so much for joining me today. And I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful day. It's going to take me a second to, to turn this off. Uh, because I have to walk around to my other mouse because this one's not gonna happen, but uh, It's we're, it's good. We're cool. Thanks guys. Goodbye <laughs>